Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and it we are live. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> it's Wednesday night. Already Brilliant. fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was concentrating on unmuting and doing things again, and last last week I forgot to unmute everybody for about ten minutes. But it's anyway, early in the morning. We can forgive you. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. Or, or night or evening or afternoon. I never get it right, but fuck it. Doesn't matter. Adam, he does this every time. Every no, I, did it. I haven't done it every time. I've had a good run for the last couple of weeks. Shut up. Anyway, hello everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, Resonance Arcade is a show about games, game development and gaming news, industry, etc. We talk about games and other games. gaming related things. Um, as you can see, we have a guest with us today. It is Adam. And I've got his name right, I believe. Because get my name right. Last well time I introduced Adam on, a, on another podcast, he uh, I, I introduced him as Andy, was it? You introduced me as Andy three weeks running, in fact. Three weeks running, yes. <laughs> and and persisted with it as well, I believe. Um, yeah, so uh, Adam Adam is from, uh, well, Projector Games, I, I, I'm assuming. Is that the... Yes, the, yeah. yes. Projector Games is my company, yeah. And uh, I'll let you do a little introduction to, for, for yourself. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I spent 12 years in the games industry, like on AAA games. Uh, I was very, very lucky. We worked on a huge number of high-profile titles, um, the biggest of which, well, best of which, probably the Burnout series, but I worked on Colin McRae, Rice Trevor Good, uh, DJ Hero, Little Big Planet, loads and loads of things. And then I left the AAA industry about four years ago to work on indie games, the biggest of which has been Fortress Craft, which made tons of money on the Xbox. And I don't believe you've looked back either. Um, no, no, God, no, no. I do actually. That's not true. Occasionally, about Halloween, I see people's Facebook posts and I go, "Oh, I wish I was in an office and going to a Halloween party." I Past occasionally that, think that. Never <laughs> I'm. Uh, I work at home as well most of the time, and I, I occasionally want to do things with other human beings. But you know what? I think it outweighs the the, the well, benefits. Outweigh the. the maybe that. we should organise like an indie dev orc Christmas party and an indie dev Halloween one. Maybe Easter, you know, a little secret Santa. Hey, I'm up. I'm up for that. I'm, sh I'm. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of indie dev groups do that. I know I've, I'm. I'm a member of uh, the Liverpool kind of indie dev meetup, and and they do they do that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, oh, go for it. Get it arranged. Go on. You've got plenty of time on your hands, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, loads. <laughs> uh, as you can see, we have Lou and and uh, Lou and Steve. Why did I forget your name? You're one of my best friends. What's wrong with me today? Yes. Uh, and, they're, and, they're, and they are in each other's houses. No, yeah. we're in Lou's house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not doing very well today, am I? Not doing very well at all. It's be that's the problem is is that is that Adam does not have a beard and he's putting me off. Whenever I look at him, it's just it's making me feel uneasy. Is it, is it you can draw off. I, well, I could, I could, I could put this on. I thought it was the best I can manage. That's actually a little bit more appealing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so, um, what we normally do when we have a guest on is we do a quick, uh, quick interview, quick probe, ask you a few questions, and then we we'll move on to talking about some games, and then we've got a few other sections that we'll, uh, we'll move on to in a little bit. So, to start off with, we always ask every, every guest this question: What's your favourite game of all time? Game. Oh, that's an impossible question. It is not impossible because no. everybody. You know what someone said last week, and it was really shocking. Someone said Sim City. Well, then they said Sims. Oh, Sims. Someone said <laughs> no, they talked about Sim City afterwards, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think the, the game I have the fondest memories of, like it's of my childhood, was a game called Dungeon Master, which was one of the first proper role-playing games, first-person perspective, amazing puzzles, like puzzles we just don't see these days. Um, so probably that, but Warcraft, I've spent far more time in Warcraft than anything else. Are you talking about World of Warcraft? Or? Yeah, World of Warcraft. I wouldn't want to go back to it. And then, you know, these days, I mean, I've, I've really, really been doing the Borderlands series. So that's an impossible question. I refuse to answer it. Okay, but you did answer it. Well, that was a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was very good. I, I'm going to take your first answer on that one. Dungeon Master. Dungeon Master, yes. Yeah. I, I was, uh, that was one of my first sort of foray into sort of collaborative online development was I got involved in the Chaos Strikes Back for Windows uh, project and started to delve into all the source code and uh, all that back in, blimey, 1995, 96, something like that. Yeah, I feel I old now. Uh, well, I say I'm, I've, I've been coding since probably around then, but not games. Games are fairly recent for me, as you, as you know. 
Go on, guys, concentrate. It's your turn to ask him a question. Come on. I was just going to say, actually, um, following on from Dungeon Master, have you been interested in some of the recent stuff, like uh, the Grimrock series? The uh, well, the thing about Grimrock is that there were no puzzles. So Dungeon Master had a lot of great ideas, and, and Grimrock kind of went, all right, experience points and levels and all of this stuff that Dungeon Master avoided heavily. Like games, it made me realise, because... Grimrock is essentially a spiritual successor to Dungeon Master, how homogenized games have become. They all have levels and experience points and all this stuff. Whereas back in the 80s when you did the game, you were like, well, how should we show character progression? I mean, Dungeon mm. Master, you move from a, a neophyte to an apprentice to a master and all this stuff, but there was no like bars and experience points. And I, I was actually very disappointed with Legend of Grimrock. It just kind of missed some of that magic and a lot of that was the the puzzles in dungeon master were absolutely amazing like real proper puzzles but game facts has kind of destroyed that area of gaming entirely unfortunately only if you look at it though you don't you don't have to follow game facts to i i don't whenever yeah. I, want, I play a game i want to play it fresh and i don't I don't look up the cheats and the walkthroughs unless I get really, really stuck on something. It and is it's a will very count. rare. Mm, but I love no, it. not really. I don't, I don't even think about it. It doesn't even occur but to from, me. Um, from a dev point of view, you tend not to put something in that can be solved when you're simply looking it up on GameFAQs. So those kind of puzzles, you don't spend time on them because you simply say to yourself, like, someone's going to look it up on GameFAQs. Mm. So, yeah, it's kind of... Uh, I, I understand part of it is, you know, nostalgia because, you know, I was seven years old playing Dungeon Master, so... But yeah, I was sadly disappointed with Legend of Grimrock, even though it did look lovely. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, one of the questions, I don't know if you've answered this before, and I'm not sure if you want to answer this, um, it, it may be a, a sticky subject. Why did you leave the AAA games industry? Um, a lot of it is, is about freedom. So, I, when I first joined the games industry, I was working on MotoGP, which there was about 18 of us. So, and that includes producers. So, yeah, I was 5% of the game. Uh, and when I was on Black, uh, that was more like 200 people. I was half a percent. Um, I, I was working uh, on the... Ooh, I'm not supposed to say who, but I was working with Freestyle Games on a on a franchise that had been cancelled. You know, you can work out who, what game that was, and, and it was really good. And I, I was, uh, and then I, I was in control of twenty DJs and about four sound guys. And then I realised that even though I was super super senior, I didn't have that much say in what was going on. Mm. And I've been writing game, indie games in my spare time for ages, um, and then Fortress crafted very well. So I kind of had this opportunity to do what I wanted to do. So uh, one of the things in Fortress Craft, you could do a ZX Spectrum shader. And I sat there for a couple of days working out how to break it out and make it look like it has color clash. And then I realized I didn't need to prototype it and then contact my producer and then work out a schedule and then get the designers to approve this cool idea. User and acceptance just, testing and yeah. Yeah, I could just do it and go, look, I've done this cool thing. Why? It was cool. So yeah, a lot of it's that freedom that, that games have, uh, lose. Um, it, they don't want to take risks, which is kind of fair when there's millions of dollars involved. But a lot of it is they don't want to risk ruining their schedules. Um, so you can't just go willy-nilly and do whatever you like. Yeah. So, so yeah, freedom, I think, is the answer. And sometimes I don't even wear trousers like today. <laughs> You're not wearing it's any right now. Good. Not, not even going to answer that one. I think we <laughs> all know the answer. It's interesting that the um, that video came up quite recently about the uh, with, with the director or producer or whatever of um, the next Zelda game basically making a public apology. But we want we we came up with some cool ideas and we want to spend some more time on this. Did you see that video? Oh, I missed no. that. No. Um, it was a it was a very Japanese, very sincere apology. Um, but basically saying we've been working on this open world Zelda game, we've come up with some cool ideas and we want to explore them further, so it probably won't come out this year. And it was nice because it was it was it was that, that freedom, that kind of indie sort of feel about it where they were saying, you know, screw the schedule, let's just make the best game we can. So it's interesting well, that maybe that's spilling over into the AAA industry now. Well, don't forget there are two types of game. There are games that arrive very, very late and they're brilliant half-life 2 team fortress diablo 3 and then there are games that arrive very very late and they aren't 
Duke Nukem Forever, Colonial <laughs> Mutants. So, yeah, it's not a guarantee for success. I mean, with no. Duke Nukem Forever, they, they had as long as they liked to get it right, and they didn't. They couldn't keep up with shifting technology. With Half-Life 2, again, they had as long as they want, and they released it when it was ready. So a lot of it depends on the development studio. At least with Zelda, they're on a fixed platform. They don't go, oh, suddenly there's a Wii U 2 that we didn't know was coming. They will know it's coming. Whereas on in the PC world, suddenly we've all got, like when the 970 980s came out last year, there's suddenly the average speed of video cards doubled overnight. So you can have situations where those surprising things come out. So yeah, sometimes um, good, sometimes not. Hmm, interesting. Um, so, yeah, so that that just made me think about a news article we've got to talk about later on about um, DirectX 12, actually, because that's uh, apparently, you, you, you will probably be more in the know about these kind of things. I don't know, actually, with, with you using Unity now, uh, if you keep up to date with all of the different API releases and uh, and things like that. But apparently DirectX 12 is, a, is a, again, a, a big shift, a new shift in, uh, you know, where, where the kind of games are going. It's going to be much faster. I don't know too much about it. They're going to use squares instead of triangles. Uh, is that is that a, trying to be an April Fool? I'm not sure. That? It's April Fool's. I'm not <laughs> sure if you're telling the truth. Yeah, it's, it's like half past seven. It's it is it. half seven. We're not allowed to do that now. <laughs> no, but I just—I yeah. mean, I heard that it, the DirectX 12 was apparently going to be a, a, quite a big shift on how how game, um, PC, well, PC and Xbox graphics do things these days. I thought you may have. Uh, been keeping well, up to date with that kind of thing a lot of it is with uh, the mantle thing the amd kind of showed yeah we've been doing it a bit of a stupid way for the last decade um thankfully i don't need to worry about it because unity will implement it and i just go yeah tick exactly. the direct text button so, this is so that's just, really but... really good as, as an indie dev i don't have the time to go rule oh, let's write my rewrite my entire engine for the three percent of people that got direct text 12 cars i can just tick a box and that's that's really really good yeah, um, and, and that's yeah, what I was just saying. It's, uh, I, I didn't think you would be maybe keeping up to date with it as much as uh, as much as maybe. Uh, who, well, I, there's a, there's... I have been because obviously I've I've got Xbox One dev kits now, so I'm mm. I'm actually having to pay attention to all this stuff, and I'm nodding and smiling, going, "Ah, oh, good tessellation, excellent, good, I'll tick that box then." Yeah, exactly. I said I I quite like the fact I don't have to worry about any of that, and you know I'm I'm new to it anyway, so it's it's good that I don't have to worry about how to draw triangles on the screen and do all the you know the really low level stuff um, well that's that's the thing i mean uh, back in the old days my god once you've got direct x5 api it took you uh, i don't know six weeks for you were drawing a, a sprite on the screen actually fonts are easy it took about a month about a month to get font on the screen about six <laughs> weeks for a sprite <laughs> a triangles oh my god that was months <laughs> of work for just a solo dev so yeah, be, be 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 thankful that Unity is there doing all the, the horrible shit for There's you. There's still a lot to learn, though. That's the thing. There's still a lot to pick up. I mean, for, for me personally, I'm, I'm just kind of starting to get into lighting and starting to understand kind of how... Uh, the, I, I just found out the other day that different tri poly counts on different meshes affect lighting differently because it's... Uh, you know, you can have two meshes side by side, shine a light on them. One of the meshes has got hardly any polys. Another one's got loads of polys, and it will you'll see the seam between them and I, don't, yeah. I still don't fully understand why but i'm getting there you know well if, if in unity specifically go to the importer take the normal the normals and tangents and slide the smoothing angle up and down oh okay so Thanks. you can actually you can actually fiddle with that one um thankfully i've got an artist i do say to the artist you've forgotten to do the smoothing angles and he's like yeah my artists are they're kind of they don't well my artist who my remaining one he doesn't really get that part yet he's he's a, a junior at the moment he will i i just honestly andy has probably got 50 emails in his inbox going you've forgotten to do the smoothing again he's like damn it so yeah yeah so um fortress craft then let's move on to that how long did it make turkey to make that in the first place uh it, the initial xbox release took me 10 weeks and six days from conception to being available on the marketplace and there was just you working on it um, I did artist. about ninety percent of it. So, um, yeah, ninety percent of the code. So, another guy helped me out with some of the networking stuff. And after release, he became a lot more involved and a lot more active in it. But it was primarily me. Um, basically, everybody said, "Don't bother with doing even a slightly similar game to Minecraft. There's no point. Everyone's doing them." And I'm like, "But I want to do it different. And I want to do it on the Xbox. And I don't care what any of you say. Do me some graphics." So. I argued with all the people I normally work with and did it anyway. So, 
Fair enough. Follow so your heart. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm doing a game that's probably been done a million times before, but I'm enjoying making it, so bugger it, go for it. Um, so we, we played it before. We we had we got um, Fortress Craft a while back, and um, we went into the game. I think we I think we were playing multiplayer, were we? Mm-hmm. Was it single player, guys? No, Blue? probably multi. We tried to play multiplayer, I think. I, th- I can't remember what what I, I don't. Yeah, we did. No, I do actually. No, I remember we we did play multiplayer, but we couldn't really figure much out in it. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of you know, obviously a lot of different types of materials and building blocks. But I haven't played Minecraft for so many many years that I don't. I haven't played a 3D builder game that's block bit. You know, that's um, voxel based. I, I, so how do you play it? What is it? What well, is the game? What's the, the concept? The funny thing you say, oh, I haven't played Minecraft in a while because I had sort of a, a burst of a bunch of streamers playing the game uh, about October last year. And I watched one guy, and he goes, the help screen comes up. At the start of the game, there's a six-page help screen that takes you through the basics, and you can bring it up, and it's all hyperlinked to bitch. And he closes that, goes, I don't need this shit. I know what to do. Chopped down two trees, made himself a little house. I'm like, what are you doing? Your base is over there. The crash site is over there. You have ore extractors there. You have machines that need to do research, and you're building a wooden house like you're playing Minecraft. So it's quite interesting seeing people just completely blank, just assume it's like something else and just tunnel vision to play the game wrongly um which is I, something I agree, that I that's have what, to sort of that's why i'm asking you because solve, yeah. when we went into the game it wasn't that i was trying to play it like minecraft because i don't know what minecraft plays like because i haven't played it the closest i've played to minecraft is terraria and that's nothing like that either so yes um so yeah um what, so what, the... what's the concept because there's all these little all these machines that do different things and i mean an ore extractor but how does it work do you put it on a block and then it extracts all from the block or so how does it the, probably the best uh simile have you, have you played factorio no Right, so, okay, so uh, hopefully a few people have played Factorio. So it was quite funny because Factorio came out about eight, nine months after Fortress Crap hit Steam. And we're looking at the Factorio video going, holy shit, have they, have they hacked our design documents? It was exactly the game we were writing. So Fortress Craft leaves you stranded on an alien planet, which is a good excuse not to have anybody else to sort of interact with. Um, and your, your goal is to build a logistics and mining operation. So... Minecraft is very much about digging downwards and building diamond armor again to the nether. With R1, your your goals are kind of more like cities or transport tycoon, that sort of game. So you're actually worrying about the movement of resources. Oh, this conveyor belt's got 10 times the resources of that one, and I'm getting a traffic jam, so I'm going to need to sort of this. Now I've got a power distribution issue. So you're actually managing a lot more of the technical aspects of the base. Okay. Um, the patch that is going live whilst i'm on the train to london immediately after this show i'm going to push the patch live on the train because i like to live on the edge and that <laughs> should be the the big one for the multiplayer so we've do- all the multiplayer machines should now synchronize and you can play the whole game beginning to end multiplayer in survival that's that's the goal you should you should push it tomorrow night friday night and then close down for the weekend that's that's living on the edge oh, tomorrow, tomorrow night tomorrow, tomorrow night being oh Thursday. god <laughs> I'm even working Friday as well, and even though it's bank holiday. It is bank. No, so um, we are actually doing quite a extensive uh, bleeding edge beta push. So we have loads of people who don't want to risk the sort of the cutting edge patches. So I, I give them, you know, the couple of our tests, and they go out and people play them. So I'll be pushing this new patch into the beta test tonight, um, and then people will be telling me whether it's broken. So it'll be available for the majority of players over the weekend. Um, but it's probably going to be you know, at least a couple of bugs in there. So when, when you when you say pushing patches now, I've, I've spoke to you before about um, you know getting your getting your new content out. You released for the Xbox ages mm-hmm. ago. Do you still push content to the Xbox, or do you only push content to the PC? So um, when we so Fortress Craft came out, and then for about eighteen months after that, we we, we delivered content patches. There were uh, ten major content, no, eleven major content patches, and we didn't quite deliver the twelfth. The reason we stopped was was Microsoft. So Microsoft stopped supporting X and A, and at that point, we realised that every line of code we wrote had a shelf life. Mm. So we kind of just finished up that patch, shipped that last patch, and then sort of left it to simmer for a while uh, and then we started using unity so we started to rewrite in unity so fortress craft on the steam is not related at all to fortress craft xbox it's a complete rewrite from the ground upwards with all of the things we wanted to do on the xbox but struggled to squeeze out of that right okay um 
So unlike on the Xbox, to push a patch onto the indie system required a 10-day cycle, getting votes, people to peer review it, and it was a, just a nightmare. On PC, there is a little bit too far the other way. I can push anything I like. I can push a different game out as a patch. I can push a virus out as a patch. There's no checks. There is no gatekeepers. Once you pass that initial review by Valve, you are completely in control. So I can push out 100 different patches a day if I want to. Mm -hmm. um, and I can have different betas. So I think we've got three different betas for multiplayer. Non beta and bleeding edge and the main lights. But really, if you, really if you push, push out a virus, you're going to get banned from Steam. Uh, yes, eventually. Unless it's a mistake, will you know. <laughs> probably will notice. Um, so uh, the, the Mount Your Friends guy, Daniel, he managed to push out a patch um, and he made it so anyone who's in Turkey or Greece, the game crashed when it ran it because it, he'd done some silly thing with a country code and obviously he's not in Turkey or Greece. So yeah, he pushed that out when loads of Greek and Turkish people were going, why is your game crashing? And he's like, it's fine for me. So yeah. yes, you have to be a little <laughs> bit careful. And this is where I, I've got 30 years worth of game coding experience the difference between a safe patch and a and a dangerous patch is something that's sort of i've accumulated knowledge by making mistakes for 30 years mm. and that's where it helps when i'm pushing these things out live to potentially 50 or 100 thousand people is going to are going to get this patch in a few minutes after i push it live so you need to kind of make sure you're, you're confident about it yeah, so, so in terms of your your Xbox dev now, you've said that you've got you've got a handle on like the latest Xbox dev kit. I'm presuming you're talking about Xbox One dev kits. Yeah. Yeah. So, what 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 are you doing with that? Are you doing other games, or is this for so, Microsoft? <laughs> hopefully, no one from Microsoft is listening. So, what <laughs> I did is I I basically uh, Microsoft got a lot of people on their um, their indie program. I mean, more people than they can deal with. You have to get recommended through the system because they have thousands of people in their backlog and they might be able to ship out enough xboxes but they can't necessarily support them with, with managers and things so eventually i made it through so I, it was last week i received two xbox ones in the post hooray don't have the U license for unity yet to run on it so i've got two dev kits i can't do anything with right <laughs> um but what i i said to microsoft is look, essentially i want to push fortress craft onto the xbox one but I don't know if I can. I don't know if there's going to be enough RAM. I don't know if it's going to be fast enough. We're a heavily multi-threaded game where you are really, really heavy on vertex transformation and a bit light on shaders. This is a problem. But I've got another um, six, maybe eight Unity games in various states of completion. So what I'm going to do is when I've got it working, I'm going to build an Xbox version of all of my games and see which ones run really well. So right. Fortress Craft pulls like one frame every five seconds and ain't going to happen. If uh, I got a game called Pizza Boy that I did for Android, if that runs well, I'm sorted. So Pizza Boy for Android, uh, that just within this much hits 60 frames a second, 1080p on the Ouya. I'm pretty sure I can make it go on the Xbox One. So I'm going to be pushing a whole bunch of games to the Xbox One. Cool. Um, because uh, I've got loads of stuff that's sort of ready to ready to roll, and it's quite nice because I'll just go drop shift beats, let the Xbox One build. Does it run? Brilliant. See, I forget sometimes because because you obviously your Twitter handle is Fortress Craft and that's your biggest game and stuff that you actually do have quite a lot of other games that you've written as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem is everybody followed that Twitter, so I've got other Twitter um, handles, but nobody follows them, mm. so I don't use them. So it's, like, occasionally, I try and tweet from my actual one and retweet from Fortress Craft, but it, it never works. No one cares. Yeah. No one. <laughs> no one cares. Yeah. I, People I are very lethargic. One. I've got about three or four Twitter accounts, and the, 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 like the other three are growing like. <laughs> very very slowly but you know my main ones they're, they're not the biggest it's not it's not still not brilliant but right um so moving on then on to a few more questions before we move on to the next part of the show um i met you first time at a land party i know you don't remember because you do a lot of land parties do you still do them yes uh last land party i did was uh, down in southampton on the south coast Funny that I'm um, in January, so yeah, um, I use them as a great place to sort of showcase games and to uh, get feedback on stuff. Even if it's just I'm just there with mates and like, have a look at this game. What do you think? And they're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So it, it's really, really good to use those. So I remember you you, you were playing this. Um, it was a projector game. 
and hence probably why your your company is called Projector Games. I yes. Imagine. Um, and and you were there was some big ship thing that you had to build and you sent it to attack. Each, was it each other or? Something like yeah. That? So that was uh, Tactics Forever that you That's uh, it. would have seen there. Yeah. So Tactics Forever is one of the ones that I would like to push on the Xbox One. Um, and you, it's uh, it's oh, it's not like anything at all. It's like it's like physics-based asynchronous spaceship combat Pokemon. So you build right. a spaceship <laughs> out of physics components, and then it goes and fights other spaceships. But you don't directly control it; it it controls itself. So it's about designing a good spaceship, and that means that when you're not there, the server can simulate fights. Mm. Look, Steve, were you at that LAN party? The um... Because it it was it was up on the projector at the what was it called? That was at Lan Ops. Lan Ops, yeah. Lan Ops, yeah. Lan Ops, yes. Lan Ops, yeah. Uh, Sheffield. Thornall's Thornall's one. Mm. Um, yeah. I, 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 oh, so sure. you you know Thorno? Yeah, yeah. He was on the show a few weeks uh, a few uh, weeks back. Ah, uh, it is a small world. It is, but I said it's only uh, we. I only knew that you we're on that through Thornall. I think we're in that land through Thornall. But we spoke a few times at the land party, but. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's one of them, probably. Isn't it? yeah, probably. Um, so yeah, so Tactics Forever is one of the ones that I would like to release on the Xbox. My problem is, it's not like anything else. I mean, I can I can argue them blue in the face that Fortnite is not like Minecraft. But if I say it's like Minecraft but with machines, people go, okay, Minecraft machines. And this game, you go, it's like, it's like, oh, it's not like anything you've ever heard of. It reminds uh, me of like. Um, <laughs> There was a game that we played, uh, Lou, Steve, that we played for a while. It was like this green kind of flight sim that you, you just fight it again. Not flight sim, Cap like an R-type. Captain Forever? No. Yeah, you, you actually con you controlled the ship. I think it was Warning Forever. It was all, all kind yeah. of vector graphics and uh, you were using yeah. boss fights, constant boss fights. I don't remember that. Yeah, so um, it's interesting there because what that is, is so you're referring to a, yes. a game called Warning Forever, which is a classic brilliant Japanese shoot 'em up and the idea is that when you destroy the ship however you destroy it, it evolves to beat you so what happened there is me and my friend we were big fans of the game but but warning forever is a bit simple so we started in a game called mothership forever which was a bit more of a two-dimensional physics-based battle and again the mothership evolved to fight you and then I saw a game called gratuitous, gratuitous space battles which I saw for about 15 seconds and went that looks amazing and then I was like, oh, and then I played it and it was so horribly complicated and rubbish and I was really <laughs> disappointed. So I decided to take the idea of what I thought to go to to Space Battles was in my head and then write Tactics Forever. Um, the funny thing, there's another game called Captain Forever, which has absolutely nothing to do with Tactics Forever, but it's a nearly identical game where you fly a physics-based ship and then put components on. And he keeps getting asked about it in uh, reviews and things. And he's like, I've never heard of Tactics Forever. And at the point, I'd never heard of Captain Forever. But the games are so similar, I wondered if I knew the guy. I think that <laughs> happens a lot more than indie developers think, you know, because there's a lot, there's only yeah. so many ideas in the world. It's like music, you can only write so many riffs, you know, at the end of the day. Right. Well, the thing is, the forever suffix means a game where something evolves and, and carries on. If, if you have a game with tactics in it, you know it's going to be turn based combat. It's just one of those suffixes that we pop on the uh, the end of our games. Yeah. So we know that um, we know that Fortress Craft was uh, like your most popular game. I think that's established, isn't it? What was what was yes. your your second most pop popular then? Second and most how, popular how, game. How, how far apart are they? Yeah. What indie game? Oh no. Yeah, indie game. Uh, all my other indie games. So this is uh, one piece of advice I say people. They want to say, "Hey, I want to be an indie game." My advice is, don't. Do not quit your job and be a full-time indie dev. So, Fortress Craft was my 11th Xbox Live indie game. Um, it sold about $3.6 million worth of units. It made about $200,000 in its first two days. That's the level of success. To compare, the 10, 10 games I released before Fortress Craft, in a two years in total, made $7,000. That is the level of, of difference of success and and failure. So, yeah, yeah I, I can tell you, I, I think the second most popular one was one called Rate My Avatar, which was a little <laughs> application so you could actually just uh, 
say how good people's avatars were. Hot it was really cool. For avatars. People loved it. Exactly. But we, we were going to call it something like that. But then we realized that hot or not is actually trademark, so we couldn't. Oh, right, right. So we couldn't rate my avatar. And it's really popular. It was cool. It, it, we designed it to look exactly like the Xbox Live system. It looked really, really slick. And you could just say, here's my avatar, and then vote them up and down. Uh, what we found was that girls get so many more votes than boys. Like, unbelievable. And then one guy messed me going, hello, I have messaged all of the girls and none of them reply. Is there a bug? I'm like, what? <laughs> so what happened, a, you see? It's not a dating um, website. It's a rating app. Well, the funniest thing was, he, I was like, well, who are you messaging? And then he gave me the names of them. So what happened is if the game couldn't connect to the server, it, it randomly generates the people for you to rate. <laughs> so he's rating procedurally generated avatars and then trying to message them like hey baby i love your avatar lol <laughs> and they're complaining at me that they're not replying back i'm like wonderful yeah, they're not real it wasn't Sorry. even online he just downloaded no. the app and dis unplugged his, his xbox <laughs> all he needed to do was add some ai just to get it to talk back like hook it into the clever bot um <laughs> or something just get to talk back to them Hey, I am Russian bride. I want wife, <laughs> husband. <laughs> Please send me all your monies, lols. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's enough probing, I think, unless you guys have any other questions for Adam. No? No. You're not, about, you're not getting ask, involved. Ask me the stupidest question anyone's ever asked me related to Xbox indie development. The stupidest question? Yeah. Oh, ask what, me, what ask me. Well, so as I said, <laughs> so as I said, um, what I used to do is calculate how many copies of the game had sold. Um, so we sold about uh, 300 million Microsoft points worth. And lots of people seem to think I got paid in Microsoft points. So I'm like, <laughs> what the fucking hell do you think I'm going to do with 300 million Microsoft points? Buy, buy your game. Obviously, I could buy, uh, a lot know, of half times. The, half the DLC available for Evolve, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, actually, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask him. What you, you, have you got any side projects on that aren't, you know, directly related to making money with with indie? Um, always. So I'm I'm desperately keen for uh, VR stuff to take off. I'm doing loads of VR experiences. We've got a whole bunch of them sort of lined up and ready to go. Um, it's, it's just a spare time thing. Still I, lying I, to yourself about VR, that. then, I see. Oh, it's great. It's great. So you I, are the I, I bought an Oculus Rift here, too. You are the yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah well, get it. all I'm hearing is that the Steam Vive makes the Oculus Rift look like a 2600. I'm like, ah, oh, no. Nah. So I, I'm queued up for a Vive via, via the Steam stuff I'm doing, going send me one of these this is the exact reason that i haven't bought i haven't went for the dk2 because one i don't have the time to look at it and invest any time in it at all and two i know that there are going to be better versions out there i mean I, even the, the the actual commercial release of uh, of the oculus is going to be much better than the dk2 yes they said that the jump between the consumer version and the dk2 is bigger than the jump in the dk1 and the dk2 that's that's their sort of segment. i'm like cool so Please hurry up and release them so I can play with them. So what what have you can you tell us about any projects or the Um so a lot of it is um is it about experiences rather than games. So there's a, a lot of the stuff on, on Oculus. I, I think the the big market is going to be these experiences. So, you know, roller coasters or a cable car ride to the top of a mountain or flying on the back of a dragon as or opposed being stuck to in a coffin. That, that I liked sounds that. horrible. I, li I oh, loved that. There was, no. you know, have you seen the the? Is it Ryan Re Ryan Ryan Reynolds Ryan film? Reynolds. The, the buried. It's basically yeah. someone has done that in Oculus Rift, and I thought it was an awesome idea. That's horrifying. But horrifying, but brilliant. Kill Bill Two. I think it was based on that because you got to yeah. punch you out. I think. Yeah, well, I, 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 it just reminded me of the buried yeah. particular that particular yeah. film. So, so yeah, I've, I've sort of experimented. I mean, a lot of it is experimenting. This is new territory. So, if I want to look up. Um, math behind the gameplay mechanics that shoot them up. People have written entire dissertations on this, and it comes to VR, and suddenly there's very, very little information about what's good, what's not good, what's fun. So it's just sort of experimenting, and you know, I've got spooky graveyards and underground dungeons and futuristic sci fi settlements. And if nothing else, so Tactics Forever has a mode where all of the HUD sort of appears as a big thing, and then you get a tiny version of your spaceship here. So that it's just floating here, and you just look around it like that. And just that is amazing. It sort of 
sort of is that it you just look it doesn't do anything you just look at it well you look at it then then you can sort of tweak it as opposed to it being in the game but it it's hard to describe to you it looks like it's here it it doesn't look like a graphic on screen you're looking around then you're looking at all of the so it looks like like it's augmented reality almost type thing Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, it's going to be. I, I think the whole VR thing is going to be very good. It's not going to be a flash in the plan like 3D Vision was the Nvidia stuff, which is I've still got my glasses here somewhere. They're awful. So yeah, um, I think it's going to be really big. And, and to be honest, with Steam and HTC and Samsung and uh, Facebook behind it, it's going to be big, whether or not you want it to be, because they're like some of the biggest companies in the world are determined to make it big and then you've got the sony one as well though we'll christ knows how they're going to make that happen on the ps4 we'll see so what's your opinion on the uh, the hololens um yeah uh, <laughs> i kind of feel that way as well i've i've got very very clear understanding of the latency issues involved um so you're going to move around and the, the thing's going to wobble and sort of you do that and it'll yeah like that so good but- idea you might be about 10 years ahead of the the technology curve and it did kind of feel like they wanted to have something that wasn't just oh we've got virtual reality as well so no no we have augmented reality is it any better no so it could be it could be again this is what it could look like like. just like i I, I said my argument is it's just like that when they released the um the connect the connect adverts and the pr looked and felt a lot better than the actual Yep. experience even though it's okay the experience is still not perfect I, I was going to say that with the weight of microsoft behind it it can't go wrong and then i remember the zoom so actually i won't i won't say that fair enough uh, there's a quick question someone's asked in chat of of yourself uh, i mean you've probably answered this a million times before but what's the next fortress craft dlc Fuck you, Malcolm. <laughs> um, right, so, we, well, we the, have a few people that we'd like to say that to that follow us constantly that talk about Minesweeper all the time. I, I can, I can <laughs> say that. Uh, no, um, I mean, the next big patch, I said, is the DLC. Um, it's the DLC, is the multiplayer. Um, we have kind of talked about DLC. This is the, the sad reality of, of developing games is that with the heavy discounts and with all the early access stuff, we're going to come out and a large part of our audience will have bought the game for about 15% of what we'd like to charge. And at that point, we start getting into the discussion, well, do we sell DLC? How how do we monetize this further? If I could, I'd, I'd fucking give the game away. But sadly, um, I have to you know, pay rent and buy new hardware and live. And it's very, very difficult to make the money from selling games. So I, I also did a game called Amputee, which is probably my second biggest selling game. Um, uh, run by, It was featured by PewDiePie twice. It's on Steam. It's on all sorts of places. And I was in a bundle and I sold 25,000 copies in the bundle. 25,000 at seven cents a go before everybody took their cut. And I'm like, in what world do gamers think they can pay seven cents for a game and I can afford to develop more games. They really can't. And it's, uh, it, it, we are gonna, uh, we are going to head towards a crash, I think. I can't believe there's, there's that we'll be able to sustain that. There's a lot of indie, indie dev. I mean, indie dev is exploding at the moment, isn't it? It's, there's, there's new, there's 10 new games out a day, it seems, or, or more. And Steam is just absolutely saturated with, yep. not just, not just game, j- terrible games as well, quite a lot of them. I've got yeah, one well, to talk about, in fact. <laughs> conversely, um, the Xbox One's been about, about, about 18 months, and, the, and I'm like, there's still no games being released. And why are all my Xbox Live with Gold games shitty two-dimensional platformers? This is a next-gen console. Show me the next-gen stuff. Hmm. So a bit of an odd sort of issue. Same with the PlayStation 4, which I think is a little better, is these new consoles have very little for them. Conversely, Steam has just got, say, this floodgates of shit. Um, so I've got I've got the weirdest issue. One of my games passed Greenlight. It's been in Greenlight for eighteen months and it's passed. I'm like, oh shit! Like I haven't even I haven't even opened the code base in eighteen months. So hmm. I'm like, well, I don't really know what I'm going to do about that because I don't really want to work on the game anymore. I was enthused about it eighteen months ago, and I've learned a lot since then. So I'd be kind of starting again. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a very odd situation. Not not too sure what to do about it. I'm afraid. Hmm. 
Well, at least, you, I mean, it's greenlit. That doesn't mean it's selling, though. You you haven't got it up for sale, well, have you, on early yeah, access or anything like that? Yeah, but I haven't got a game. I, what I had was a prototype to <clears throat> pass greenlight, so I don't mm. have the whole game, or I just click build release. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it. It's just sitting there with, I've got the greenlight token, and I'm kind of tempted to sort of ignore the trailer and write a completely different but better game with the same title, because <laughs> I can do that, apparently. Yeah, yeah. But you'll get complaints on there while you do it. Uh, so, but it'll be better, so that's fine. Let's move on. Let's move on to our What Have You Played section. So this is just where we talk about the games we've played for the last week or so. Um, me, Lou and Steve and, and Sam are typically very, very bad at playing games because we're so busy with real life and everything else. So we're relying on our guests to to <laughs> tell us about what they've played and give us their opinions. So in that, I mean, we have played a few games this week, actually. We're not We're not completely devoid but in that um uh, what have you played adam what is what's what's well your... first of all what i haven't played is borderlands the pre-sequel on the xbox one because i tried to get the version with a little radio control clap chap and they'd sold out with about nine seconds so <laughs> i have played that fuck you gearbox have you played it at um, all I, i've played the pc version loads i will get it i'm just a little bit angry because i couldn't get the collector's edition that i wanted because i'm a child <laughs> so i did purchase the collector's edition of homeworld because i am an enormous homeworld fan so i've got it's in a box got the 12 inch uh, mothership from uh, from homeworld and they've really really screwed up the 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 port they, they've reported it so they ported Homeworld 1 into the Homeworld 2 engine and then souped up the Homeworld 2 engine. It's a really strange situation. So they've really, really screwed it up. So a lot of the stuff doesn't work. They put in all this auto-balancing shit to make it easy for modern gamers. Um, and then there's a multiplayer beta. So it's, it, the game's been, what, 12 years, 15 years since its last release? And yet they couldn't actually wait to release the full game. They had to release it now and patch it working multiplayer. So, boo to Gearbox, I but say, that's, that's a Gearbox game as well. Yeah, I want to say, um, that's that's just what they do these days, don't they? A, a AAA games just get released and they don't actually... They're not actually working a lot of the time, or they'll have problems with servers, or they'll have problems with the fact that it's not complete. You know, there's something missing... They've, they've, they've missed the end boss off because they haven't done it yet. <laughs> Yeah. What? Well, the thing is, you... is, it, is it discipline, or is it is it a, a ta actual valid tactic to make more money? Some of it, it's quite honest, is just poor organization. So if you it's, if it's... you look at Rock Band, if you look at Rock Band, so I worked on a Rock Band-esque game, which I should not mention because Activision tell me off every time I do. If you look at Rock Band, so Rock Band costs, let's say, a million dollars to create. If you look at Rock Band, three quarters of a million went into the background shit. The shit you don't look at, all the customization, all of the loadings, all of that stuff that you don't give a fuck about, but looks good in screenshots. And you'll find a lot of this that you, all of this fluff, <coughs> all of this crap that you actually don't give a shit as about. A, as a hardcore there. gamer, I agree. But as a no, like a standard consumer, I think that stuff is what sells the game and sells massive amounts of it. Yes. Well, this is the thing. Good graphics sell the game. But mm. at the end of the day, you're paying 75% of your 40 quid towards stuff you don't actually want. Yeah. And that's... And that's not a good state of affairs because it's becoming unsustainable because everyone needs to do it bigger and better than the previous game. And that's why Call of Duty is in this insane situation where it needs to sell a huge amount. Like the Tomb Raider game, well, well, that sold like 15 million and then they said, oh, it's been a bit of a flop. <laughs> like, well, how many did you, how many were you expecting to sell? You've designed your game wrong if it must spell 30 million. And GTA, I mean, GTA was what, $380 million budget? GTA 5? And it, it made it back, but if that had flopped, It made it back and then some, though. But if it didn't, you're in trouble. But this means if you want other GTA-style games, you need to say, hey, guys, so what's the budget for your game? 10 million. Okay, cool. What's GTA? 400 million. They want us to compete with one fortieth of the budget. It's a, it's a scary state of affairs for the AAA industry. Mm. Uh, again, it's the sort of things that can lead towards... a massive crash when they are relying on huge 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 amounts of money but the the, the whole gaming industry and in, not the gaming industry sorry the gamer culture in general is starting to rebel against that you know that whole stop stop thinking we're idiots you know stop stop yeah. Stop assuming that we're just going to keep paying. We're still we're going to keep pre-ordering. We're going to keep buying DLC. I mean, I know quite a few people who I would not consider hardcore gamers, but I would consider people who play games every night. You know, that they're into the Destinies, the CODs, the Fifas. You know, they're into the big, big games. 
but they're the kind of games that I don't like as someone who likes games, if that makes sense, yeah. you know? I yeah. like something that I prefer. I actually prefer, I get much more value for money from indie games because there's so much more heart, soul, passion into them. You know, I don't need to worry about, I mean, I don't really care about release dates and stuff. I just, if an indie game comes out this week that looks cool, I'll get it, you know? I don't, yeah. I'm not going to save up 70 quid to get the next big AAA. Yeah, a lot of it, I mean, this is something that Spitfire sort of touches on there. A lot of it, though, is that there are too many games. There, there is too much choice. So if you go to the I mean, the film industry releases a lot of films, but not even 10% of films are games. So, like, you know, the, the Hollywood, Hollywood might release, not Hollywood, but the film industry might release, say, 300 films a year. Computer games releasing, like, 10,000 games a year, you know, across mm. all these platforms. And it means that... So again, one of the games I played recently is Cities. So this is because everybody was talking about Air was playing it. I thought I'll have a look, and I was a bit unimpressed because it's just SimCity with pretty graphics, which is like, oh come on, there's so much more you could do. Traffic system's good, but then if you look at the, the spike, bang, gone. You had this wonderful spike of everybody playing it, and now they're all bored and they've moved on to the next big thing, which is Bloodborne, apparently. And you've got this terrifying culture of grabbing a game, playing with it for a little bit, and then moving on. Because there's so, so when many. I was, that's why. Yeah, but when I was a kid, I used to you know, get my magazine every month and games would sit in the top 20 for two years, two and a half years. And now, I mean, when I was on Burnout, um, we were lucky to be in the charts for six weeks at that point. And now games have this enormous spike and then they just disappear. And it's really, really, really scary. But it's like but, it's like anything. The, the more marketing, the more PR you do for a particular product, regardless of, of where it comes from, what the, if it's entertainment, then that will sell, it will peak, and then it will it will drop. That's how marketing yeah. works. And that's yeah. how these companies, well, the big companies, that's what they aim for, don't they? Whereas well, the, what you want is the long tail. I and mean, this is where mm. Clash of Clans has done amazingly at sustaining that long tail, as opposed to just having a big spike in sales and then nothing. Long tails are what you want. That's why Minecraft is so successful, is because of its long tail. And that's something we're hoping for in Fortress Craft. We're not hope, we don't want a big spike of sales. What we want is a sort of a slow increase. We get that big spike, we're not going to be able to cope. We're, we're basically a four-man team. We can't keep up with the forums. We couldn't well, keep up with the bug you, We want to grow. You have nicely. to argue there, though, if you did get a big spike, it suddenly hit, then you would have, you would, should have the funds to hire more people to do more, uh, what, especially in the short term, uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, well, eventually. I mean, part of the problem there, of course, is that I don't get the money for, like, two months after somebody actually buys the game. Um, but I don't want a big spike and then a nothing. I, I want, want to grow. I want to, I want to be Dwarf Fortress, so I'll say, but not say starbound which has a big spike and then uh, and then a big patch and then uh... yeah yeah well the um, spitfire has just said in chat and i don't know if you you were responding to that with yours it's very similar to what you were talking about are there are there, are there any games that people are actually looking forward to now i remember a few years ago being excited for new games that were being developed but right now i can count them on one hand i i totally agree that's it I, yeah. I've, I'm excited about uh, Metal Gear only, be, only because I'm a Metal Gear fanboy. That's the only game that I'm interested in. And only because it's a bit different from the other Metal Gears. If it was a new... I don't know, actually, no. I'd, I probably would well, still be excited about uh, it if it was the same as the others. Well, I was excited about Homeworld and I was disappointed. And I was excited about the Starbound patch. You were excited about Gauntlet as well, I remember. I was, oh, my. Don't even mention that. I tweeted them going, are you aware that you can get professional voice actors and not just people from the <laughs> fucking mailroom? And they're like, <laughs> yes, we know. And I was like... Well, if you know, maybe you should have hired a professional voice actor. What the fuck was that shit? <laughs> and, and everything else. But, you know, just, but I can't remember a game. I think the last game I got that I wasn't massively disappointed by was probably Borderlands. Borderlands is one of the few games where I have expectations and it hits them. It doesn't soar past, but I have the right expectations. I, with Borderlands, so. I know what I'm going to get, though. I think it's a standard yes. formula. That's, yes. it's, it's a little bit different from other games, but it... it it fit, you know, I don't know, it, it fits the criteria, I suppose, of Borderlands, you know, it's a very specific type yes. of game that's it's got similarities. I, it's what I want, yeah, I, I, and again, I'm very disappointed with Grimrock. Uh, I think Kerbal was probably the one where I had no expectations and it massively soared past them, like, this is great. Well, it's so. funny you should say that, we, we we had a LAN party a few uh, months back and we pretty much played Nidhogg for the entire LAN party. And it was so much fun. Just I just sat with a friend playing local multiplayer on a pad, 
kicking the crap out of each other and doing daft and falling off things and you know accidentally killing some killing the opponent because that, that's what that's what it feel like playing the game but it yeah. was so much fun but it was dead simple there was nothing to it i imagine the budget on that was shoestring you know i imagine there was nothing to i imagine it was done by in a game jam actually and yeah, well, we, uh, it toured around it toured around loads of different jams and the guy didn't want to release it and eventually he did so it no, took I um, a long time. Yeah, the last land we did play Carmageddon, whatever uh, reincarnation, really which is want, yeah. really disappointingly broken. I have I have a good computer. It ran badly. The guy I was sitting next to has the best computer. He <laughs> has SLI'd nine eighties. He has a top of the range CPU. There is no possible upgrade for him to buy, and it's running at about twenty frames a second. And I. <laughs> Wow, and yeah, it doesn't even though. play that well. And they're like, "Oh, we will optimize it." I'm like, "No, you fucking won't. You d you don't you don't pull that level of optimization out. You rewrite levels at that point." So, and it, it wasn't fun. It, it, it lost that spark of Carmageddon. Yeah. So yeah, I can't think of a game I'm looking forward to at all at this point, and I can't think of anything I wasn't really disappointed by. As I said, uh, Spitfire message Overwatch. I don't think about Overwatch other than the trailer was amazing. And the gameplay video appeared to be cutscene, 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 yeah. cutscene, cutscene, with a couple of seconds of running around between it. It's Team Fortress, but but different. I think I might I, give it a, a look, though. You know, the, there's games that I should be really excited about. Like, well, when the Order 1886 was announced, I was a little bit excited. I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. Well, that's and good. Then, you can polish it off in a lunch hour. But that's what I'm saying. But I ended I ended up kind of, as, as I got more and more reviews and, and read a little bit more about it and started, I just realised this is just an interactive film. And then when it came well, out, guess what it was an interactive yeah. film with bloody quick time events in it. And did, you, did, you, did you enjoy the the naked cockfight bit? That's the only bit I've seen about it. I haven't it. played it. I, I haven't bought uh, it. Okay. The same goes for Watch Dogs. I was really, I was actually quite excited about Watch Dogs, and I never bought it because it got such bad press after yeah. it got released. Well, a lot of it. So a lot of it is the Duke Nukem thing. So Duke Nukem sort of averaged like five out of ten. I saw lots of comments going. This is the best five out of ten game I've ever played. A lot of reviews are not. Um, impartial they are I thought it would be this good it's only this good so it's a five and this thing over Watch Dogs was a good game it's a good solid game but everyone thought it was going to be the most best is the most amazing thing ever and it wasn't it was just a good it's game it's good PR that's what it was yes well yeah if that worked for Driver and Enter the Matrix I suspect we will be putting it with good PR for the rest of eternity you do not do not like Driver I, I, I can't. Driver do you not remember Driver 3 Oh, the original Driver, I no, really no, enjoyed no. So, personally. So what? No, no, Driver Three. So that that was uh, the that came out whilst I was working on Burnout Four and was uh, quite controversial. So what happened? They got loads of people in, like journalists, to play the game before it came out. And this is important because this means that with a print magazine, you need a six to eight week lead. So what happens? They came in and they played the game so they could write a review, so the review could come out on day one. Perfectly fine. What happened is there were loads of glitches and bugs with the game, like you'd fall through things, you'd um, all of this stuff. But the journalists were assured that this would be fixed. The slowdowns would be fixed, the crash would be fixed, the fall of the world would be fixed. But they weren't. So these reviews are coming going, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10. It's such a great and polished game. And everyone's going, well, are you being paid off or something? Mm. So, yeah, they, they had that issue. I mean, it's a little bit better now, but still most re big review sites will play a game several weeks before release and there's no guarantee it's going to work. See, when I used to buy magazines, those, those used to be called previews and they used to be usually... They still have previews. Slightly impartial, but usually quite positively impartial. Hmm. But they, they, they wouldn't promise anything. Well, reviews, are, I, I, I seem to... Uh, uh, yeah, so a lot of it was at, at this lead time. I, I do recall it, like issues of Atari ST users that go, on the cover, Super Shooter 4, it's great and amazing. And then reviewed later in this magazine, and they go, Super Shooter 4, review 3 out of 10. Because they had to be nice to it when talking about it for the cover disc. Then it was actually shit. Mm. So, That's yeah. Rise of Robots. Rise of Robots. That was a, that was a fighting game. That was all right. Oh, oh, you, oh my! Oh no! No, no, no! Am I thinking of something one, different? You're maybe? thinking of One Must Fall 2047, which was one of the best beat em ups ever. Rise the Robots was done by uh, done by Warner Brothers, done by some ex Bitmap Brothers. A lovely guy called Sean. Um, nice guy. Rubbish game. Uh, what happened? 
is they spent so much money on the games. They had Brian May doing the music and all these top level architects doing all the le level design. They spent so much money on the game that they had to come out on, I think it was like 11 platforms. So this is a game that is, it still looks good. This, it's, say, it's, it's got a shiny look to it, hasn't it? From yeah, remember, oh, it yeah. still looks great. But the problem is when you have a game that looks good on the PC and it's also coming out on the ZX Spectrum, and the Mega Drive, and the... Yeah, it came out... You can find the Commodore 64 version. So they had to dumb it down to the lowest common denominator. This is the point where people had NES pads with eight buttons to play Street Fighter. This game was a one-button fighter, so you could tap the fire button for punch or hold it for kick. Yeah. But there was so much graphics, you couldn't jump over each other. So you've got the two guys, one would duck, and you try and jump. You just slide up and down like that. You couldn't jump over it. Oh. You couldn't flip. And in the multiplayer, you couldn't pick any character. One of you had to be the single-player character because there was no way of fighting monster, Robot 3 against Robot 6. The funniest thing is, it's generally regarded as one of the worst games ever made. The best thing about it is, Warner Brothers made a big deal about how it was the first game ever to have proper QA, and they spent $40,000 on proper testing. And it went drastically wrong. And yeah. It sold very well, of <coughs> course, but was a massive, massive flop. So, other games then. We're still on our game list. I'll uh, I'll let Steve talk about the next game. You've uh, you said that you've played some City Skyline. Uh, everyone That's seems to be briefly, playing. Uh, probably a couple of hours, uh, just in the sandbox mode mainly, just to see what the difference was between that and uh, Sim City. Two thousand and fifteen, whatever it is. It's Sim City, the latest one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the advantages straight away were the scale of the area that you could uh, you could build your city within. You can expand it quite a lot more than you can in Sim City. Uh, the traffic system's good. Um, power generation's quite interesting. You can build dams, and that has an effect in the water level further downstream. Um, if you take the traffic and the dams out, is there any re and the graphics? Is there any reason to play it over original SimCity? No. <laughs> is this original original SimCity? <laughs> original. That's why I stopped playing it because I was like, hold on. So this is like you go five blocks of residential, two of commercial, three of industrial. Repeat. Oh, you haven't. Moved. Looks great, but the dams are good. Is from it? The water pumps Which and the developers? traffic's brilliant. Which developers done it? It's I want to say Firaxis. It's not Firaxis. Um, it's, is it not an indie studio? It's Paradox Publishing. Right. I, I so, don't know. I should have. I should have just gone uh, and tapped to Steam. Yeah, what, Console what? Order is a developer. Never heard of. Them. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, well, okay, I'll, I'll move on to my list then, because I think you've played the... Obviously, you two have played Skylines, but uh, me and Lou have been playing a bit more Savage Lands as well. Uh, have, you heard of, have, you heard, have you heard of Savage Lands? Uh, we, we've, 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 it's, it's an indie game, and it's in early access, um, but I, it's, I, I'm really enjoying it. We've played about eight hours of it so Is that far. the dinosaur one? No, no, yeah. It's like a <laughs> Skyrim, but it's a survival Skyrim. You know, you just basically dumped on an island and you have to survive. But the, the building could be better. You know, the fact that all of the trees, no matter how big or small they are, produce three logs. You know, that kind of thing could probably be a bit better. Um, the, the, you know, everything, all of the, all of the items that you have have kind of wear and tear on them. Um, Lou and I played about three, four hours the other day, and I split it up and put it on YouTube. And it's been released uh, over the next week or so, but we th there's, th we had like moments where we'd go out hunting and we'd just suddenly start panicking because we're, we're running out of running out of heat or we're, we're getting hunger or something. And I, I really like that. I really like that kind of, especially when you're with a friend. It makes a big difference to to how fun the game is. When I played it on my own, I was a little bit like, oh, I'm getting hungry again. I can't be asked. Close it. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it didn't feel very good. I've kind of found this, it's the same as watching a crap film. If you watch a crap film by yourself, it's like, oh God. Watching a crap film with somebody else is fun and entertaining. And I, I, I never have a problem playing a cooperative shit game with some people. You can just sit it's and not, piss out. I don't think it's, it's that shit either. I actually quite I enjoy it. I just don't think it's good on your own because it's an empty island with a, a skeleton every now and again and a wolf and a dragon that never attacks you. <laughs> that's basically you're everything that's on you're not, you're not selling it to me here. <laughs> no, I said I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. The problem I have with it at the moment is that my PC, for some reason, I've got a, I've got a 680 in here. I've got a... a six core bloody latest i7 I and, and 32 gig ram and it's crashing every five seconds and I, it's crashing on lots of games and i thought it was um, just the cry engine but it seems to be every game ever that has if you're randomly crashing it's probably heat 
Um, it's not. It, I'm running what? at sixty degrees. I've, I'm monitoring it. Oh, up, yeah, so. but it could be your rat and um, if, you, if The way I always say people, if they think, even think it might be heat, take the side of your case off, stick a desk fan, blow it out there. If it suddenly stops crashing, you're like, it's going to be heat. I have done that um, before, and I've also upgraded um, my motherboard RAM and CPU since, and I've kept the graphics card. I think it's a faulty graphics card. So yeah, far. Which you, you, usually faulty graphics cards are generally the RAM chips getting hot, and then it just yeah. dies on you. I'm 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 going to get us um, a 980, I think, soon. Anyway, so you are quite a few generations behind now with the six series cards. I can't recommend the 980s enough. The they're incredibly cheap and wonderfully fast. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm and gonna... quiet. So I've got with the Frozer, it's got comes a little sticker saying, "Warning: the fans may not spin on your video card. This is perfectly normal." because it's so low power consumption when you're not running games. Awesome, because right? I'm sick of the bloody noise on mine. Uh, um, so Spitfire's just asked, that in Savage Lands, when you start playing with a friend, do you all start in random places, unable to find each other like most of the other types of games <laughs> nowadays? Sometimes. Watch, yes, sometimes. We we spawned uh, this time round. We only died once, I think, because we got the hang of it. But we, we played it, and we spawned. when I spawned, I spawned right in front of Lou. But previous to that, we spawned at completely other sides of the island, and I couldn't find him, and I spent 20 minutes running to try and I find was, him. I was whacking a rock and you could hear me from wherever you I were. I could hear you through your <laughs> headphones, I think, though. That's what it was. <laughs> and that gives you some glimmer of hope, and I think that's probably intended by the developer that I can hear that chipping noise. He must be somewhere nearby. And I don't even know how big the island is. So, And, and the problem is, we, how many times did we run off into the wilderness to go and find some meat because we were starving? Right? We'd, we'd, we'd kill a wolf, we'd turn around and be like, where the fuck are we? We've absolutely lost where camp is. There's not where well, the fires went out, so we can't see the the plumes of of smoke. And we just uh, we did actually find our house again, but it took us about again 20, 30 minutes to find our little village that we've been. It's building. a really good simulator in being lost and how easy it would be to get, be lost in the wilderness. Well, the weird thing is, I get continual complaints. People going, "Hello, I'm playing Fortress Craft. I've just dug down half a kilometer, and now I'm lost." Like, well, maybe you should have been a bit more careful there. <laughs> No, I agree with you. And to be fair, that that was the only thing really in that game that when we played it the first time, because we didn't really know what we were doing, there was a, there's a little resurrection thing that you can build when you've killed some skeletons and get some skulls. You can build this resurrection thing near your camp, which is cool because you res resurrect right near your camp. Um, but if you before we didn't actually build it, or should I say we built it, but it bugged the first time we played it, and it didn't. It just wouldn't build Didn't and then ugh. so yeah but i said i think in that game if they could maybe put a little bit more effort into the the building aspect because at the moment basically you place a building and then you run off and go and get loads of wood and sticks and metal and stuff and then just basically put it into this building you don't build it you know there's not really any interaction with the buildings yeah it's simple crafting right? very very like simple some of build. the crafting's a bit it's it's a bit more elaborate but it's still fairly simple in the it's end you know things. you have well, to build a blacksmith before you can make certain armors you know that if, kind of if thing they, if they can do that as a mod for skyrim if they could use a skyrim oh. world the skyrim assets but give you that kind of gameplay cooperatively multiplayer multiplayer elder scrolls I'm, I'm not asking for, for multiplayer skyrim because i know that there are many reasons why that wouldn't work but to to have well, that thing well, isn't that their next game is it? Uh, Elder Scrolls Online would be multiplayer Skyrim. Yes. Surely. Uh, it's no. terrible, is it? That's, 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 it's hey, quite, uh, 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 uh. After with Skyrim names in it. It's, it's a completely different game. But if but if the if they were to take the Skyrim world and do that, I'm sure there's some models that could be pretty good at that. The multiplayer stuff would be quite hard to do, but that would be very good. I'd, that, I'd play it. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I said I, I've, I'm quite quite enjoying um, Savage Lands. I'm hoping you are as well, Lou, and we can have another game. I just I get the feeling that we are getting close to the end of what the game can offer. But, but I mean, before, we were playing Terraria together as well, uh, and we got to a point with that. I I pretty much end gamed it. I had the best armor, the best swords, the best pickaxes. I was flying through like terrain like there was no tomorrow. And these guys kind of got a little bit bored before the end, and I was like, we were one or two bosses before like completing the entire game and. You just, you just Can you actually off. complete it now and push back the halo? Because I, I have to. I, I'm like two patches behind. Yeah, you they, can. Yeah. They read They redid the whole end game much, much better. So, but I don't Hard know if mode. you can actually push back the halo and then actually complete the world. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's a complete end game state. 
is it supposed to be? Because I didn't know I, what it was. I, I, I don't know. I don't the, know. The end game to me was basically I had the best possible items and I could killed all of the different bosses, but I was all over the wikis to try and find out which were the bosses and you know which ones you, you yeah. had to which one was the last one. The only one we didn't kill is Duke Fishtron and we tried to kill him but I think we died and then we, it was the end of the night for that night so we haven't tried again. We probably never will. But no. I enjoyed it when we did that. I, I, thought, I thought we got our money's worth from that. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I paid a couple yeah, of quid for that. Yeah. It was amazing. I was very, very late to the party with that as well. Very late. Well, I bought, I bought it about two years before I actually played it. <laughs> yeah, well, the story of my Terraria. life with most of my Steam games. Terraria is an excellent example, though, of a, a good quality game that doesn't push the envelope like graphically because you can now get it on PSP, Xbox, I think it's on the DS pads, now. On tablets. The pads. So, yeah, that's a good idea. And I... It's like I fail horribly at is not melting every computer I put my games on, but to actually aim very, very low and then see uh, see whether or not I can actually get it onto other consoles, so other platforms. So hopefully I can get it onto the Xbox One, but I need to mentally stop putting so many particles and effects and high poly and <laughs> physics and everything. In I, um, I've recently taken a change of direction with my game and I've decided get rid of all the textures. I'm just PBR and everything and it's just flat basically flat materials with a bit of edge detection on it and just so I can get the game out because at the moment I'm struggling with art and models and getting you know getting the, the visual stuff done so I've just decided just flatten it off <laughs> just make it look like anti-chamber something like that you know super hot. kind of thing yeah, Sorry? Super, hot. super hot yeah super hot yeah I was actually inspired by that you know that kind super of hot just I just so I can get it out basically because I'm sick of it now I've been working on it for two years and my spare time and I just need to get it out you know oh yes it's super hot um is that it's not like a matrix is... again. yeah that's I know that. is that's the one where bullets move when you're playing and everyone yeah. ranted on about it and apparently it's going to take them another six months to write the game yeah but it's been well well more than six months since they uh, announced it yeah, it was going to be another six months. But they've got out. a lot of people on the team now. They did a, a good Kickstarter, and I don't know where it is. I haven't heard any many announcements since then. But I saw a video recently of the endless mode they put in it, which has added some 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 more to it because I think the uh, it, it was creating the levels was a big grind in that game. Because they, although they, they're not they're untextured, they are deceptively. <laughs> uh, someone's modded it into Quake. Brilliant. <laughs> you, don't about... need to, you don't need to bother buying it; just play it in Quake. Done. Yeah. Um, so, someone just said Savage Lands is early access, so why buy it when it comes out if you've maxed out? This is we've had this before. We've had basically if you know early access is a bit of a double edged sword, isn't it? But the developer gets the money for the game in the first place, and then you kind of get bored of it. I mean, same applies to any early access game that I've bought. Really, I kind of played it to death. I'm a prison architect. Played it to death. Absolutely played it. Twenty, thirty hours I ploughed into it. Thoroughly enjoyed it, and then I just stopped. And I'm yeah. sure they've done yeah. much better patches since then, and it's a much better game now, but I just can't be bothered. It actually does uh, offer up a very dangerous thing for developers. So Minecraft suffered from this horribly, and Starbound has gone down the same problem. So you're, you're working on content, and you've got a bunch of people who are playing your game. So you go, oh, we've added tier 6 armor, we've added tier 7 armor, we've added tier 8 armor. Mr. Newbie comes along going, what the fuck? So I, I played Starbound january last year i've been playing it did, recently and then this big patch came out january this year so i played it going you guys haven't touched the start game you've put all of this billions of tons of shit later on and i'm still at the beginning of the game going what am i supposed what to am do? i doing why yeah. am i doing this yeah so it's that's the problem with early access stuff you want people to continue playing your game you end up making your game less and less accessible to the new players and this is something in Fortress Craft I'm trying very hard not to do. Every and I wipe my world, I start again, new world, and I play it from scratch, trying as best I can to pretend I'm a new player. And and then I get other people to play, it, and they're like, just they're asking the most stupid questions, like, why is what, what what's this? Why is that flicking? I'm like, oh, because well, you've got to activate the ore scanner through it. And I'm like, but this is what we yeah. this is the problem we had with your game. This is the exact problem. Yeah. We we went into the world and we went right. What do these things do? Yep, it's yep. very, very complicated, your game. There's a lot of menus yep. and a lot of things that, that do things with each other. But I didn't feel like there was any kind of um, solidarity between I didn't really yep. see... I mean, I'm sure once I got <laughs> into it, I'd understand that, but I didn't feel like to, I knew what fair, each bit did. To be fair, when I first played Minecraft back when it was still quite an alpha game, um, there was no um, tutorial or anything like that with well, it. Still isn't. Sorry? What? There still isn't. <laughs> there isn't well, with Terraria, really, either. It's the achievements yeah. which tell you what to do, but basically... I've yeah, uh, 
<laughs> it wasn't even obvious that you had to punch a tree to get some wood to start with. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be quite frank, in Minecraft, the achievements are useless anyway. Like, I, I get people go, someone actually said, are you going to make your game easier like Minecraft? I'm like, like the game with no help files, tutorial or instructions. Like and the game that guy, is just a sandbox. Another guy is <laughs> actually arguing that in Minecraft, he's never looked at a wiki page and how to craft anything. I'm like, you're just lying. You're, yeah, yeah. E either or you're not counting the 5,000 hours of Yogscast videos you watch just watching a tutorial. Like, it's impossible. No one has ever crafted anything in Minecraft I working it out. I still, I, I was a bit of a wiki whore when we played Terraria and I thoroughly, I still thoroughly enjoyed yes. the game. I wanted to yeah. get to the end and I don't mind. It is a bit of a cheating, you know, cheating in my eyes. I don't like doing that, but I, I liked it for that type of game. There's and Minecraft no way you could work out like the altars in Terraria without help. Like the fact you had to make a special hammer and hit the altar and yeah. that spawns the YouTube. This is not accidentally, obvious. you might do it accidentally once in a blue. I mean, I, there was a few things that I did do accidentally, and I was like, you know what? How long it took me to figure out how to um, break backgrounds in that game? I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. I was like, what, what, what? what? I'm supposed to be placing. Right, I've placed yeah. it, but what now? What do I do? Yeah. I mean, in the first patch, um, it wouldn't even. You, you could now say, is this a valid house? And it'll go, no, it needs a light source. That didn't exist initially. Mm, yeah. And initially, it didn't tell you about houses at all. Like. Wow. Uh, took me, so, I, I, had to, I had to look at a YouTube video to figure out how to make a house because I just didn't get the concept. I did not understand that you had to make a background, a roof, and doors in the 2D world. If you know, I didn't. I, it yeah, just didn't yeah. translate to me that the background was the walls. Um, so a zombie night owl just said, "Why would a company want to finish a game if they made all the money up front in early access?" Well, I point you at planetary annihilation, which went, "Oh fuck it, we're done." I point you at uh, DF9, which went. We're not making enough money from this, so we're done. We're out really actors. Hooray! We're doing a new project. Um, well, there was another one again recently. Easy answer, they fucking won't. Mm. Because people are idiots. People go, oh, I'm so annoyed. I'm never going to buy it. Oh, that looks quite good. Oh, I shall. We'll get the next game. Um, yeah. I, but when I buy because, early access games, don't buy, no, well, and I don't answer. buy them very often, I am I would not be someone who would complain about it because I know that it's early access and I know that it'll probably ne never get finished. I'm... I'm yeah. I, I usually buy early access games on a recommendation from someone who's enjoyed it. Then I'll know that I'll have at least a little bit of uh, fun with it. It's a couple of quid, you know, whatever it, whatever it is. Uh, maybe 10, yeah. 12 quid is so, the max for an early access one. I, I guess the other one, uh, the classic one, is Starforge. So Starforge uh, is, again, a Minecraft-esque voxel game. And their, their video, their Kickstarter video is amazing. All this, like... Like loads of bugs running up and big walls and gun turrets and stuff. This was about four years ago, and they still don't have any of these things in the game, and they've gone through all their Kickstarter money. Mm. So you've got this issue that these people they 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 will run out of money. I mean, we've yeah. got plans for Fortress Craft, and when it comes out, we're going to say, look, this game has been released. We've basically made enough during early access to fund the development. We want to continue writing together. We've got loads of ideas. We'd love to continue writing it. If it doesn't sell. We can't. We need to move on to another project and be very, very open with people. Just saying, if we don't sell, I, I can't remember how many it was. It's not many. I think we need to sell like 55 copies a day at full price in order to easily sustain us forever. And if we don't hit that, then we, we just simply going to have to be very, very upfront. People going, we have to stop the development of this game because well, this, not making this is why I'm approaching it as a hobby at the moment. Because I mean, at the end of the day, I'm doing something. It's I'm going to release a demo, and then if the demo does well and the Kickstarter does well. Because I will have to go for Kickstarter, otherwise there's no chance of me ever being able to do what I need to do in the game. Um, and and then if that does well, then I will make the game, but I won't release it in early access because it's it's basically it's a single player experience by game, so you can't really do an early access anyway with it. Or you could as maybe episodes, possibly or something like that. But yeah. Okay. So. Any any other games you want to talk about, guys? Before we move on, any other games that have been? Oh, I've got two. Forgot about that I was gonna say, I also say, I, I did enjoy Besieged. Um, um, oh. Fortunately, um, nowhere near enough content, but uh, but but it has promise for the uh, for the future. Steve St was showing us his uh, his contraptions in Besieged uh, at the last LAN party, and it looks interesting. But I, I, it's one of those games that I just see as a bit of a time waster for me at the moment. Yeah. I do uh, like well, the it, concept. It does have. Um, a story mode. Well, sorry, it has a series of levels, but they're so easy. 
So um, it's interesting because I've always gone with the Fortress Craft has a great breadth of stuff that's not polished. Polish comes later. Besieged went with a tiny game that's gorgeous. It is beautiful. It's polished like anything. And then you play it going, oh, great. So I've just paid 12 quid. And it's very polished. Good job, guys. But you've got fuck all game in here. So, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. It, it did very, very, very well. Um, and I, you can polish off the entire game in about an hour. So, Fair enough. yeah, interesting approach to game development. Not one I would, I think I would agree with. Um, I played uh, a game that somebody gifted me on on uh, on Steam. I, every every week, I tend to get a new gift from uh, one of our one of our Resonance Arcade fans. Lucky uh, you! Yeah, it's, it's, they're never. They're I've got to buy my own. You know what? I got star, actually. I got Starbound as a gift, which I was quite chuffed with because I. Um, I, I quite enjoyed playing that, even though it is a bit broken as it stands. Um, anyway, I got a, I got a game called Caster this week, and it's a it's it's an awful indie game. I, I, I played it for <laughs> I played it for about I, I think I, I managed twelve minutes, and essentially it's it's it looks like it's a Unity game, and you you you're just on terrain essentially, and you 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 kind of you're running around killing things, little bugs. And changing trees into fully grown, like broke, like burnt trees into fully grown trees, and collecting orbs. And that's it. I'm looking at this. Like, it's got very positive user reviews. Eighty six percent of the user reviews are positive. That, I'm that looking video. At it. It that video. Off. That video that you're saying that, that it it makes it look a million times better than the actual game is because it is uh, awful. I have to say, I, I I do take I do take offence at the phrase. It looks like a Unity game. It looks like a shit Unity yes. game. Yes. Oh yes. Um, it is six years old. Release date nineteenth of March two thousand nine. So it probably isn't a um, a Unity game. It's far too old, uh, but looks absolutely horrible. So um, you said that it's got mostly positive reviews. The best review. Step one, purchase for 40, 14 cents. <laughs> I read these, I read Store. some of these. <laughs> Wait for three cards to drop, sell them on the market for 18 cents, profit. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. There's a, there's a couple of negative ones as well, but it, it's it's not good. Don't get it. No. I don't know, wh I don't know why I... Potato decided to send it to me. I, I just got it one day and I was like, oh, free game, let's have a look. Um, I've also played a game called Edge of Space. Now, when I logged into Edge of Space... Wait, does space have an edge? Uh, this one does. This space does have an edge. Um, I haven't reached the edge yet, but I'm sure it is there somewhere. The, um, it's it's basically a Starbound-type game, but I think I don't think it's procedural, or it doesn't seem like it is so far. I well, quite like good. it. I quite like it so far. I quite edge like the, the crafting mechanisms in it. It's You, you essentially... The, there's not much there yet, I don't think, and I don't think there will be. I think they've probably abandoned it. But um, I got it with... Um, the, a, a pack that did similar kind of games like with Terraria for example and uh, it, I like the look of it, I like the aesthetic but it's just basically break blocks down, use them to you know, break mm. plants down use them to uh, craft and stuff Does this it game does look have a giant like eyeball boss in it? Uh, no, but it does have it does have the skeleton boss. It does skeleton. It does, if, uh, yeah, skeleton. I yeah. I haven't, um, I haven't got that far. I played about 15-20 minutes of it. I quite enjoyed it though what I did play it does look quite nice. Yeah. Um, the, the interesting thing you mentioned about the procedural stuff of um, Starbound. So same thing with that and No Man's Land. So you know how Starbound has completely No Man's Sky, you mean? Mon no Man's Sky, sorry. It has completely procedural everything. So Starbound has procedural everything, but everything looks the same because it's all randomly generated. So you the, just get... The planets aren't a very interesting. B. Yeah. Terraria is procedurally generated, but I like the world in Terraria. Yes, There's something it's more about consistent. it. Yeah. Whereas this, they just go and replace tree graphics with mushroom tree graphics. Oh, yeah. replace unicorn spike with floppy ears. And it just, oddly enough, for something with so many billions of combinations, just all looks the same. I, I quite enjoyed it for a fair <coughs> few hours, but then I kind of just realised this is a bit... And then they the, the released a patch. The, I'm on the beta patches on Steam. They released a patch and it just broke the game. And I had to reset my character. And then I had to go to a gate... Use the gate to get to a like an Pub. outpost, and then when I got to the outpost, that's when I started getting quests. But all the quests were broken, um, and I had to go and get someone some coffee. That was one of the quests, and I thought, right, yeah. I think yeah. I've had enough now. Coffee, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and you have to put it into the coffee, the, the space age coffee machine. But I start, I also started building up like a little farm on one of the planets. 
then the thing that made me stop playing was the fact that the spawn point where my house was, it changed just randomly when I left my house. And I don't know why. It was a it was a bug, obviously I, a bug. I'd say, I, I mean, I was following Starbound. I lost what respect I had for the developers. And they went, oh, yes, yeah, so the next patch will wipe your world again. Like, sorry, you, what That's not fucking acceptable. amateurs. So Fortress Craft, I think we're on the ninth revision of the world data. If you plug in world one data, it'll go one to two, two to three, three to four, five to six. We have like made notes going, if you haven't run the game in the last six months and you open it up, you may lose the ore that is currently in your smelters. We've done minor losses like that. But just the blase, oh, you need to wipe, we'll wipe your world again. Like, fuck. There needs to be some migration um, effort put in. There has to be. I mean, I yes. have to do that in my job as a software uh, architect. I have to migrate data from legacy systems, migrate, um, you know, logic and algorithms and stuff into newer yeah. systems. I have to do that. So why can't game developers? Yeah. All they I mean, are are data structures. That's all it is. There's nothing complicated yeah. about it. Well, what we've said is, look, if I add in like a new ore, I can't populate the existing area with new ore. That just won't work. But you, so you might have to wander to new areas or start a world. But like, I, I can't do well, much about that. Everything else, we've pulled it in. So what they did, what they did with um, Terraria is interesting. When you, when uh, and it worked quite well. When you opened up hard mode, the Halo like creates a V shape in the world, so it just yeah. overrides the existing world with different block types. And if yeah. you, and then it also when you've killed, when you've broken some of the altars some parts of the world change into different ores, palladium or kelium and something else. And uh, it worked. It was seamless. It didn't yeah, seem to I really, break anything. I, I, I really, but they're, they're not patching because I did the equivalent of, you know, we had tin and copper and I added in iron. I can't just flag the entire world as regenerate with iron. It just doesn't work like that. But right. all your world, your data, always you always have the option of carrying on, exploring a new bit of it to find the new ore and then coming back. When you explore but, new bits in your game, does it re does it is it procedurally generated at yes, that point? Exactly. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's okay. But I did I mean, we never want people to say, Oh sorry. Oh, you know that that base you put three thousand hours into? Yeah, we'll wipe in that sorry about yeah, that. That's we're, not, we're not we're not sorry at all. So not with a building game. You can't you can't be doing no. that. Sorry. I agree. Right. So let's move on to our next section. The Lou's favourite section of the of the the game. We're not on a game. We're in a no, show, in a game. and it is the way of the exploding list. <laughs> yeah, we haven't made any any art for that. I'm sorry. Uh, I can see by that your was face. Art? That's... That was before, uh, 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 Chris. Uh, I'm I'm impressed. You. That, wait, that's not the word. That's not the word. Different word. Not impressed. It'll not impressed. That's what you meant. No, not impressed. That's it. Are <laughs> horrified. <laughs> Someday, Lou, Lou is going to pull his ass out of, of no, pull his finger out of his ass. My ass, on my finger. <laughs> his ass out of his finger, and actually do a video for that, so we can I can click a button and uh, do a You'll cool. You'll still screw that up, Chris. I will, but that's half the fun. At least you don't clip the mic when you do it. Anyway, so yes, the way of the exploding list is a section where we we used to have the whole show was a list show. It was horrific, but we are now, <laughs> but we now we now just have like a fifteen minute twenty section minute section where we we own right, So now only part of your show is horrific. Yes, and now only part of the show is horrific. You'll like this. So what we do is we ask you the audience what? to see if anybody, somebody, somebody enjoyed that. Zumba Pop enjoyed that. Enjoyed your little uh, fist fisting of the camera there. Um, so, <laughs> oh, right, moving on. The, um, what the list section is is we just we just come up with something. So, favorite protagonists in games, favorite something in games, most hated characters. I don't know, something else. I've got a few on my list, but if there's anybody in chat that has anything, someone came up with something very good last week. Immediately, as soon as we asked, um, I think it was what was it last week? Most inspiring moments in games, or something like that. Moments, I think so. Yeah. Which we we spent a good t a good while talking about. But I'm going to tell you what I've got on my list. Um, games that deserved a sequel. Mm. Oh, I like that. Uh, well, that's easy. Every game I've ever played that I like still. <laughs> this is the point of a list show. <laughs> yeah. I so, have to say, one of, the, one of the ones that amazes me, uh, I know I worked on it, is there hasn't been a burnout game in what, a decade, 11 years. And that amazes me. They still churn out Need for Speed games constantly. And not a burnout one, and that that I I would like as a gamer to play another burnout game. Definitely, I really enjoyed so. burnout when I played that. I think I don't think I played there it. Are, there are games that have sequels Sorry. where the sequels have been absolutely dire or broken for some reason, yeah, like but, Magic Carpet. Yeah, but that isn't that isn't what we're asking here. We're asking 
games that one hit wonders essentially that that deserve a sequel. So games that don't already have a sequel. Well, yeah. Magic Carpet doesn't have a good sequel. No, no, it doesn't have a sequel <laughs> that deserved a sequel that deserve a sequel. So th this, as well, this is this is wishful thinking, isn't it? And no, you can't say Magic Carpet because it does have a sequel. Sorry. It does, but Magic Carpet Two needs a sequel then. <laughs> Someone's yeah, actually yeah. just uh, Zumba Pups actually just said in chat, "How about games that deserve a non-shit sequel?" So, <laughs> but no, let's. This is the problem. I think I think most of the games that we've enjoyed have sequels that have been mm. shit. Popular. Well, no, that's, I mean, that's a good. Um, Gawler had uh, Gawler did sequels right because they made a sequel to the game that was a massive improvement over it. So you've got Gauntlet, then Gauntlet 2, then Gauntlet David Dems, then Gauntlet Dark Legacy, Gauntlet Legends, and then obviously the new one. They fucked it up. Um, <laughs> It's one of those that, sadly, I have to say, I, I kind of balk at the question because there's too many sequels out there. Like, um, the, if you look at like, the top ten selling games, nine of them are franchises or sequels. Um, well, this is why it's an interesting subject yeah. to talk about because I, I'm i of the same ilk. I, I, there's very, very few... Oh, actually, no. I want to say for a few sequels that are, a few games that had sequels that I enjoyed, but when I think about it, there's also lots of games that had sequels that I, I thought were better than previous ones, so... Do you, do you, I thought someone jumped up just uh, remembered Project IGI. Do you remember what IGI stood for? I'm going in. I'm going <laughs> in. Project, I'm going what, in. What was that game then? What was that about? It was a uh, very realistic, it was, uh, it was a very realistic uh, first person squad based military shooter. If memory serves, that's a long time ago. I think we've had enough of those. <laughs> what squad based shooters? Just a screenshot yeah. at the moment of. Uh, yeah. Of a man with a, a, a rhombus for a mouth. <laughs> I say, I like the, uh, if I remember uh, the Damocles games, the mercenary games, the old space exploration ones where you had like planets to explore. I'd love to see some of those brought up to date. Like some of the Atari ST games, we, we sort of see games that are brought back, but none of the really, really old ones when they were, were still very uh, innovative. Um, and we just got too much reiteration of Halo era stuff. So, you know, FIFA's and Halo and Need for Speed and all that stuff. Sort of well, a lot of the really yeah, old ones. That's the problem. Where we were limited it? by technology. A lot of the big games now these days, that's all they live on because the IPs is what important, is what important yeah. and that's what makes them money because they've already established the brand, they've already spent money on it and they can put money yeah. into the game and just spend an X amount on marketing and they can budget yeah. for it. I mean, but, one brilliant game I played was Subculture. So it was Subculture was literally elite underwater. And you play it for a while, and then you, you had to go out and then pick up materials, and, blah, and then you realised you were about this big. So you had a little magnetic grabber, and then you pick up, like, bottle caps and coins. And it was wonderful. Really good <laughs> game. No problem with the game at all. It doesn't need a sequel. What it does need is a HD remake. And I think yeah. that's, that, to me, I would prefer a lot of HD remake. I mean, proper remakes fix some of the glitches of the game, support new technology, and... Um, and sort of bring this. I mean, Dungeon Keeper. There's nothing wrong with Dungeon Keeper. It doesn't need a sequel as well, such, had, but it does they, need bringing Bang out today. Well, they, had, they did Dungeon Keeper too, though, so they had a yeah. sequel for that. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't really. It was really more of an expansion pack that came out six months after the original. I mean, we're now what twenty years, fifteen years after this. I'd love to see a proper sequel to. Was there a, um, was there a cannon fodder too? Sorry. Was there a cannon um, fodder too? Uh, yeah, yes, it was. Cannon fodder three. Oh, I can okay. I, I could perhaps hint that perhaps there might be a new can of fodder being worked on. Not that I'd know anything, of course. There but, is. You know, there, perhaps, there, was, perhaps. there was recently a, a can of fodder game, wasn't there, which didn't do too well. Yeah, there was one released at um, the end of, well, sometime last year, which got absolutely oh, was, diabolical. Was, oh, did it come out? Yeah. <laughs> Just how well it did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, um... <laughs> A game that Steve and I would probably say would be Syndicate Wars, wouldn't it? So well, Syndicate Wars itself was a sequel. It was, well, but a sequel to Syndicate Wars. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. What's that new what? one that's coming out? The Syndicate style game. Uh, Dark Satellite Rain. Satellite Rain. I was going to say Dark Rain. Yes, yeah, Satellite Rain looks like it might be. Uh... It, it's it's looking fairly positive at the minute. Um, I've yet to uh, to to like dive in and buy. To be honest. Yeah, Is I'm it? Gonna, I, okay. Yeah, you can get it. A lot stuff. of these. I mean, I got burnt on a few too many early access games. Planetary mm -hmm. Annihilation being the big one. Yeah. You can fucking release the game, and then I will. Uh, I will talk about. I will look at it when it comes out. Mm. Um, just gonna avoid early access things unless it's a good game. Like I said, Besiege is beautiful and short. Carbogeddon's broken. Planetary Annihilation is broken and will remain broken. 
We've got some people here. Cold Fear, Eternal Darkness, Vanquish. That's a good one. I, I really enjoyed Vanquish. Um, Alan Wake. Isn't there an Alan Wake too? Or was it just a, did it have just loads of DLC, Alan Wake? I think it had some DLC. It's got quite a lot of DLC though, hasn't it? What? Um, Rage, Rage has got a sequel. It's called Borderlands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and it doesn't use the Tech 5 broken engine. Oh dear, oh, I that, don't know. Stan got that right in the end. It looks nice, no. don't get me wrong, what, but it was what, fucked. What got me about that was John Carmack, oh, of course, it's video drivers. And I tweeted going, if it's fucking video drivers, why when I open up your config file and go min size equals 4096, suddenly the game looks good. Fuck off, is it drivers, you... <laughs> I, I disagree with Zombie Owl's Limbo 2 because I thought Limbo 1 was boring, I have to be honest with you. I, I got more frustrated with it. I love the first bit with that spider that stabs you. I scared I got the bored shit out of that bit. And then it, it scared me a little bit. That, then I thought, like, there's nothing going on in uh, this game. Um, I'm, I'm struggling with this one. I can't think of any. It's hard to think of an original standalone game that, that, hasn't, got that hasn't got a sequel already. So maybe we should, maybe we should, maybe we should expand this and say, like Zumbapup said, that get, get games with that deserve a non-shit sequel. Then. Well, games a lot of it is, uh, a lot of it will be like games that I'd say HD remember games I'd like to see redone on on current generation. I mean, the big one, thank heavens, is Rock Band. They are bringing back Rock Band. All my Rock Band equipment will work on the new one. All the DLC will come across. That is how you do it. This yeah. is how you keep as a happy customer. But I mean, there's yeah. Oh, yes, Giant Citizen Kabuto. That's a game. Not playing oh, that myself. It's a um, it's a game in three parts. So you play a bunch of like space marines, which are actually like frogs, and you land on a planet, um, and you do sort of a series of missions in that sort of ninety style. Um, it was really funny. So your guys, they they do not want to they do not want to do this. So you guys are like you need to go and find three seeds from the tallest tree in the forest. It's like no no, I just just need to know where where this is. I don't want to do this. Like, no, you must go. And then the, the second part, you played like a siren or casting magic. And in the third plot, you played a like a 500 foot tall giant. It was brilliant. Absolutely a wonderful, wonderful, brilliant game. Looks awful now, I'm sure of it. Okay, it of does look awful, but... One of the first games used pixel shaders. Um, it looks like, um, what was that? Out is it Outcast? Was that a pixel shader game as well? Or... Uh, that was a voxel game, wasn't it? Voxel, the world in voxel yeah. Yeah, but yeah, Citizen Kabuto was a great game. It was at the time; it looked very, very good. But we are talking ninety-eight, ninety-nine here. Yeah. What about Armed and Dangerous? Then, because that was quite fun when it came out. The, uh, nah. God, there's there's so many, that, and I'm now starting to think maybe we should expand this to say games that deserve a HD remake. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm thinking. I mean, I read the original Tribes. I really thoroughly enjoyed the original Tribes game. Yeah. But no, that that's it's still it's not it's very lost. popular, it was, though, is it? Well, it isn't because it got shut down. Uh, but it was a good well, game. Uh, so the interesting thing about Tribes of Send actually is is, a, is fascinating because it was a free to play game, and it is widely held up by industry bods and gamers as how you do free to play games. They go, this is perfect. They made no money at all, and they burned for like ten million dollars in capital and went bust because they were so nice to the player with their free-to-play aspect. So, um, hmm. another one that pops in my head. This is a personal favourite, and I know this doesn't apply to everybody, but Battlezone Two. I thought mm -hmm. that was a wonderful game. And yes, I would, there, are, I would... there are spiritual successes to that. There's stuff like Smite. I think is a is a is a that's no, Smite's uh, Smite's uh, Dota style. Oh, yes. Sorry, what am I thinking of? I'm thinking of. Um... Is it oh, savage? Um, uh, oh, evolve, not evolve. Um, evolve. Wait, battle zone. The one in tanks. Yeah. No, no. Well, battle zone two was uh, you were you, you had a, like a command center that you you it was first person game uh, initially. Yeah. You'd run into a little. You build a command center first, run into it, and then you could control all of your units from there, yeah. or you could come out and get in one of the units and then go and attack the base. And natural selection. I, that's it. Natural selection. That's what I was trying to think yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like that. I've tried to play it and I really thoroughly did not like it at all. And it's it's too fairly quite, cool. it's quite inaccessible. It's you've got to be quite dedicated and be willing to get your ass kicked a lot. I imagine it was Natural Selection Two that I played, so that could have been a bad. Yeah, NS One was a lot better. NS Two, they kind of it took them about seven years and they went off into their own little world, and it it did struggle to make any um, headway. I was going to say, I was going to say Shadow Warrior, but then I remembered that it did have a HD remake and no one talked about it enough for me to even bother looking at it, so. 
not so much a HD remake, because I know there actually was a HD remake of this, but another world, to go back to that world with mm. 3D, 3D graphics that replicated the look of that game would be really cool. I, I like, what was that a flashback? That was the sequel to another world. I it always like really that. Told you. Sequel. See, someone else agrees with no, me that it was the... Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> same engine, same developer. Not the not... Same, it's not the same engine either. Yeah. It, was, it was Bitmap in the, um, and um, another world was all vector bits. It, would, yeah. it feels, but it could, because it had very similar animation and stuff, but if you look at flashback in another world side by side, don't yeah. look anything I'm, like each other. I mean, they I don't know, look so... like each other, but they play similar. Well, the well, side scrolling platformer. Yeah, Sonic that, play is that, similar. But no, it doesn't. Uh, no, it I, doesn't. I, I, I have to say, as the guest, I think I get to decide. Yeah. And I'm afraid Chris is right in this case. Yeah, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that the character in Flashback was Vector, Vector because he was so smooth. But yeah, it, they did play similarly. Um, but I remember Flashback being the first game to sort of really make me realize how idiotic Ooh. computer games were because there was a bar and you came into the bar and I did a barrel and shot my gun off. No one, everyone just sat there drinking. <laughs> Why is everyone ignoring me? Clive Barker's Undying, uh, Zomb Zombie Night Owls said. Oh, that, that shit me up that game. That, that was a um, C64 game, wasn't it? No, 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 it was a PC no, no, game. It was a Unreal Engine, that was. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I, oh, it was, it, there was one thing in that I played it in that late night when I lived on my own many, many years ago in a flat, and I, I, I put the, the vision on, whatever it was called. You had, like, a, a vision you could turn on that turned the whole house into, like, a horror house, and all the pictures changed into, um, like, disgusting portraits of people with holding mm. their own heads and stuff. And um, I just... It just freaked me out that entire game. I I played it again um, many well, a few years ago, and it still scares me a little bit. It's still I'm just a softy though. I'm afraid I I'm a bit biased because I worked on Clive Barker's Jericho, and I don't think I ever want Clive Barker to make any money ever again. <laughs> I hate. Um, gun Gunpoint uh, is nothing like Flashback. So, uh, in fact, nothing like it at all. Zumbapup. I would I think like to see a remake of uh, Shenmue. I've not played it, but I've got it downstairs off the Dreamcast, and I keep meaning, I keep meaning to get it on and, and like properly plough through it. They are remaking it, though. You I think. keep meaning to get it on and plough through it. What are you talking about now? You you heard. <laughs> you can take what you want from it there. Mech Warrior. That's another good one. E, there's a lot more with has this uh, any, subject. Has there not been any more Mech Warrior? Oh, there, I guess there hasn't. Mech Warrior is so suited for a uh, of Oculus Rift style game because you're in a cockpit. Um, isn't Hawken? Hawken. Mech Hawken and Shogo. If you remember Shogo, armored Shogo. mobile armored division. Armored Core. Armored, armored, armored Core was terrible though. The only good thing about Armored Core was the fact that you well. I, you paid 300 quid for this big, big bloody control system and the game was shit. It did nothing. The, Armored Core had one great feature though. So if you died, it wiped your save game unless you flipped at the controller and hit the eject button on the, this big controller, which was a brilliant idea. It was I brilliant. Yeah. You got it in, you got it in a, a big, massive... Um, uh, did, wait, wait, did you buy it? Thing. As it's why you're so bitter. No, no, I didn't buy it. I saw it. I saw it in a shop when I moved to Blackpool originally, and uh, there was. It was just like, it was horrific. It was like it's like three hundred pounds worth, and it was second hand. I think. I used to work in a computer games store, and I unboxed one of them the first day they came, and they came with a hard hat and a set of overalls as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh... No, um, um, I uh, they that one keeps doing the rounds at various uh, retro gaming shows, and you're you're quite right. The game itself was it, it, not that the game was awful, but it was an Xbox game. There was quite a limit to what you could do, so uh, it'd be one of those that doing it again now would be better. Yeah, it was one. Well, I think we could go on about this all day. So shall we move on to the next section? Go on we're, then. Is fact, it another list? We've only got twenty minutes left anyway, so we're going to have to power through all this stuff. And what's um, the stuff that you put in anyway, Chris? Oh, so Sozard, Sozard, <laughs> that I do some work for the bloody show. You <laughs> co-hosts. I don't know. Um, right. So yes, onto the news. Onto the news and Steve's belly button. <laughs> <sighs> um, Pillars of Eternity was released to very good reviews. Apparently, this is. Uh, 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 it's been getting a fair amount of interest recently. It's kind of an Icewind Dale style game, isn't it? Mate? It, it appeals. To, it looks. It appeals to me, but I haven't tried it yet. So, um, so you said that's early access, or is that full game that's being released? I think it's a full game. It's a. It's, it's a, a full, full AAA, game. full game as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I'm afraid it, I didn't play because it looks so awful. It looks awful. It does look, look oh, old school, oh, doesn't oh. it? Yeah, uh, it's the, it's not the good old school. It's the old school I want to forget it's, about. <laughs> I quite like, I, I quite like the look of it. I have to be honest, but I, I'm a I'm a fan of Dungeon Siege, uh, that 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 particular genre. So that's probably why I like the look of it. But Dungeon Siege was 3D. This is all pre-rendered 3D Max stuff. It looks like Diablo One. Mm. Uh, I like the look of it. I don't mind pre-rendered stuff. It seems to be doing. It seems to be doing well. Yeah. Mm. I'm just putting uh, links into chat for people. Um. All right, so we'll move on, seeing as no one has opinions about that. Um, Give him my opinion, I like the look of it. All right, fair enough. Um, uh, EA have decided to lock someone out of Origin for doing too many benchmarks on a game, which I thought was quite funny. At the same time, so, so some, some magazine reviewer has, has benchmarked a Battlefield Hardline with lots of different hardware for their magazine, and they, they, they got ah. locked out of Origin for it because they changed their um, graphics cards. They changed their hardware too much. GUIDs, yeah. I imagine, something to that effect. Yeah, uh, Windows has that same issue though because you've got that. Once you change enough hardware, it locks you to the new one. So yeah, I thought I've they were that. actually unhappy about them benchmarking their game. No, 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 no. I don't think it was anything to do with that. I think it was just a mistake, and uh, it, uh, it it popped up in the news the other day. I thought it was quite a interesting thing but I mean I, th I think they've said that they will unlock him you know and, and if he keeps doing it they have to just keep he just has to keep contacting them it's, again it's more bureaucracy that's in place uh, you know with a system yeah. they can't override I think it's just uh, unfortunate for this one guy who does a lot of benchmarking um, the new GTA 5 uh, patch which is patch 1.0.9 1, 1. and this is the Xbox and PS4 patch uh, has been a visual downgrade apparently they've taken off taken out parallel Parallel. Oh my god! Parallax parallax mapping. Parallax occlusion mapping. Um, there's there's more distance pop up, um, so you, you, it's more noticeable in the distance. But they've improved the frame rate on the PS4. Basically, if you're on an Xbox One, it's not worth the upgrade because it doesn't do the, anything. The, apart the from stupid thing here is why the fucking hell are they so obsessed with not giving console gamers a high or low detail, a smooth or a pretty performance quality? Honestly, just give people that option d they've done the right thing frame rate is king our frame rate is king i played i played gta 5 on my xbox 360 going this is a pc game i'd fucking turn the detail down because it's running like shit so yeah give us detail settings we're not morons why though because consoles should just work that's the point no because some people want to run the game at 60 and have it look like shit like me other people want their games to run at 20 and look glorious so okay fair enough fair enough um, but I disagree. I think if you're on a console, you should suck it and live with it, personally. Or live with the high frame rate or live with the nice graphics? Don't care. Live with what the developer gives you. You're on a console, you shouldn't You shouldn't have choice. <laughs> <laughs> they get to have choosers. <laughs> no, I mean, at the end of the day, though, one of the, one of the benefits of having a console and playing games on a console is that you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. One of the mm -hmm. things about being a PC gamer primarily or whatever you know you generally have to tweak to to every game to your rig slightly i like the fact that i've got menu options and stuff but i wouldn't what, really want that on console personally one of my biggest disappointments with owning a console is going into the settings menu of a console game and realizing all i can do is change the music to on or off and you can't plug a keyboard into it <laughs> it's so disappointing I mean, so, so someone in chat, a few people in chat have just said that they want options in the console game, so maybe you're right. I don't know. I, I personally, when I, want, when I play a console game, I just want it to work. If it doesn't work, probably take the game yeah. back. I've got it's to be not, honest it's with right. you. It's, it's not they're not working, but I said in GTA, lots of people were obviously very happy with it running the way it did. Um, personally speaking, I was looking at it going, I, I would really much rather it ran smooth and I lost some of the visual nicety. But that's a personal preference. Uh, it just seems weird that when you've got personal preference, it's not performance ones directly that you just take these away from players mm. fair enough i think i think maybe these days though it's a little bit more um in your i suppose it's a bit more okay back in the day of the nezes the snezes the early consoles it wasn't really a problem was it you didn't have problems with frame rates and i mean i'm sure you could have them but it just it it generally wasn't discussed about yes sorry yeah, games were at 12 FPS on the oldest machines. Yeah, but you, you didn't... It was 15 FPS on the original PlayStation. Yeah, and you didn't really have um, options or choices with, uh, with well, that Well, actually, Vice City did. Vice City at, uh, and GTA 3 on the PC, you could turn the motion blur off and on. 
because lots of people didn't like the motion blur. Um, the main upshot, turning the motion blur off, is the game ran a lot better. So we used to have them, and now it's gone. Okay. Well, I disagree. Um, Bloodborne has been beaten in 44 minutes. As per every bloody console game that's been released recently, everybody is... Um, every every week there seems to be a new... Oh, this, the Destiny's newest hard mode setting's been be beaten in 29 minutes by some pleb who's got too much time in his hands or something, you know. <laughs> it's, I, I, You're just jealous. Why is this news? I don't get why this is news. It, you know, this, this guy's done a glitch run as well. Item duplications and uh, various other glitches in the game itself. Apparently there's a part right near the beginning of the game where you can glitch to anywhere in the game or something like that. But Go this is a thing with speedrunning. This has been... Speedrun, that's what it is. It's but speedrun. That's the the but reason this, is, it's, it's a console. big game. It's a big game. It's brand new. And GameSpot want to write articles about big game that's brand new so they get hits. That is the answer. Yes, you're that's right. That's why it's Diablo 3 comes out. First man person to hit maximum level of Diablo 3. Well, of course someone's going to the fucking first. It's not news, so... No, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. It's, it <laughs> seems to be that there's more and more of these articles coming out all the time. And it's getting starting to get on my tits, I've got to be honest with you. Because it's not news. It's it, This is all all the subculture stuff. Clickbait. That used, yeah, that used to exist for people like Lou, who enjoys watching his speedruns that is now becoming uh, like news to people uh, to get to, to the, the wider I mean, world I've, I've seen quick done quicker it was oh, it was mind-blowing i watched it going holy like level three he jumped down pipe bomb up get the key and i'm like oh my god that you are so good yeah. and, and now it's, it's not even a game i've even played so it's uh it's not something i'm going to have any caring about no Right, um, I was hoping Sam was going to be here for the Metal Gear Solid news, but uh, Metal Gear Solid is getting a, a movie apparently, and I first I've heard of it. Really? But I've already I've already seen that. Wasn't it called Metal Gear Solid Four? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, they have, these guys haven't watched us play. We're playing through Metal Gear at the moment, and uh, these guys haven't watched me play through yeah, Metal yeah. Gear Solid playing 4 Playing through. Hey, I'll tell you what, there's more gameplay in Metal Gear Solid 4 than there is in the rest of them. Yeah, when I've played, oh. when I've played through them again, Isn't I've realised how little 40, gameplay there is. Is it 20 hours of cutscenes? I can't remember. It's, in, it's just a crazy amount. It's something ridiculous. So the, the, end, the end of the game is a three-hour cutscene. Yes. So look forward to that, what? guys. Yes, it's a, it's a two-hour or three-hour cutscene, something like that. Um, but yeah, the, the the new Metal Gear Solid film is getting a writer apparently, so that means that they're moving forward with it. Even even though they're having there's Kojima problems at the moment, and he might be leaving, he's having conflicts with the studio and all kinds of other stuff. I don't think there's that much actual detail out there. I think I don't know if he's actually going to leave the studio or not yet. Um, but I think it's it's up in the air. Uh, as a stand, but uh, again, I I don't know how I feel about that. I don't I don't think I care about a Metal Gear Solid movie, especially if they have fucking Kiefer Sutherland as Snake. That can so off. Metal Gear Solid Four has the longest cutscene in a video game at twenty seven minutes long, and the longest cutscene sequence, meaning the cutscene is broken up by loading screens, it's seventy one minutes long. Seventy one minutes, okay. So seventy. It's, it's well, so let's be honest, hour. they've already done a film of it. Yes. Well, I said it's, it is the the whole Metal Gear Solid thing. They're all about cinematic experiences, but at least they don't have bloody quick time events in them. Please do. don't add them. Yes, they do. Not the R ones and R twos. They don't count as quick time events because they're totally uh, I optional. Think, I think what he means is don't put the quick time events into the movie because that would be weird. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know he said yeah, yeah, that. No, no, no right. sorry. I'm I'm half reading chat and half worrying about my tinnitus for some reason. It started kicking off. Um, you, uh, and, and from that article, anyway, from the Metal Gear Solid article, I noticed uh, that Ubisoft are also cashing on this with Ubisoft movies. They've got they've got movies coming out for Assassin's Creed, Ghost Recon, Watch Dogs, Far Cry, and Sprint Splinter Cell. Didn't Uwe Ball already do Far Cry? Uwe Ball. I don't think he did do Far Cry. Someone did Far Cry, I'm sure of it. I'd... I just I'm amazed care. it hasn't already been. Uh, to be yeah, fair, Assassin's Creed amazing. would actually make quite a good film. It's got a Ooh, really God. good twist. The whole time travel thing could actually be really good. Far Cry, what a guy running around on an island killing people, not so much. Uri Ball did do a Far Cry movie in 2008, just so you know. God. <laughs> just had a big um, noise at the window. I might have to go and investigate in a minute. Um, Right, so uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm not keen on on the idea of, g of game movie films anyway, but 
yeah, Ubisoft especially. I'm 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 not bought into that. Yeah, not bought into that. Um, I'm not going to talk about the next one because that's just clickbait for Microsoft Xbox One, Xbox stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, Sid's, Sid, Sid, me Starships gets bad re- bad reviews. Are we surprised? Well, I, when I saw that the game came out for like twelve quid, I thought, wait, mm. this is Sid Meier who's written one game, and nine, still- three nine thousand sequels, and is just doing the same thing again. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I don't think this is the same thing. I think it's been cut down considerably. One of the criticisms with uh, with this is that it's um, it's it's basically would be a good game for mobile. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Maybe it's, it's getting a mobile version. Uh, Pirates, by the way, was extremely good on mobile. Ironically enough, so S- is that Sid Meier's Pirates? Is Sid Meier's Pirates? Yeah, very very good on mobile. Enjoyed it a lot. N- never played the original. Played the mobile game. This is really good. So fair okay, enough. Screw that one up. Um, DirectX uh, 12, we talked about this a little bit earlier on in the show, but DirectX 12 promises to be better than ever with more low-level API access. Doesn't affect me personally. Obviously doesn't affect Adam either. Well, it affects people, AAA developers, surely, because they're not developing things in in engines. They'd have to upgrade their engines, but they have entire teams to do that for them. So, you know, that's that's all good. Um, (laughs) The Mortal Kombat producer... Uh, leaves Twitter over violent death threats and sexual threats against his wife and daughter. Now, Flawless victory. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not that. I, I mean, obviously, it's wrong and it shouldn't happen. And I, we wish we were, we didn't live in the world we live in. But it's Twitter and it's the internet. You know, again, you're in the public eye. You're going to get some kind of negative criticism against you, regardless. Um, uh, the, there's. I've, I have to say, so quite seriously, I've been in this situation and I talked to a policeman uh, and he quite simply, he said very simply, you get a lot of these people going, oh no, I've received death threats and rape threats. Question, is it a credible threat? Do you genuinely fear for your life? Contact the police, they will literally, I know it seems like a film, they will stick someone outside your house, they will trace who did it. It's very simple. You don't need to go on Twitter going, oh no, exactly. I'm, I'm making such, you know, I'm, I'm playing the professional victim, which is what it sounds like this guy's doing here to promote his thing but you just don't need to do that you contact the police they will deal with it for you hey, 99.999999% of, <laughs> of the time someone will not actually come around your house around your house to knife you apparently chris so this happened to you once but apparently you're a lot less likable than me yes i um <laughs> I, I i used to run a, a local band forum a music band forum and uh obviously emphasis I, on the word local That's local yeah everybody knew everybody yeah. i banned a few people because they were posting pictures of dead babies and some highly controversial racist and prejudiced content um and so i I banned them because i warned them a few times you know as a forum administrator does i gave them plenty of but they thought that they ran the place so basically this one guy came around and threatened to sue me and all kinds of stuff because he was uh because i was apparently he had um he had um uh, business related content in the in the p in the private messages on the forum so what i did is i exported them from the forum and sent him a csv with them in and uh, and he shut up after that <laughs> he, there was nothing there i mean you know it was ridiculous um, uh, zombie night out uh, when she starts writing computer games tell me and i'll be interested Ah, right, yes. Let's uh, let's avoid the uh, Anita Sarkeesian stuff because that has not won- gone down well v- uh, very often in uh, in this channel, <laughs> in this chat rather. Uh, Steam Discovery update happened last September. Um, I wasn't aware aware that this was something that came out last year, but it's it seems to be the, the Discovery things where you get a queue, isn't it? On yeah. Steam, and yeah, I mean, apparently uh, it's working well. I quite like it. I like looking through my because it it seems to suggest the right type of things to me. Although, if I've been playing a lot of zombie survival games, all I get is zombie survival games for the next for that week. Which really, is not- it, it it just recommends random shit to me. Like just just total random. I have no idea why you are re- recommending this to me stuff. So it it doesn't seem to work so well for me. Uh, I, 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 I wish it, I was you. It's worked for me so far, and uh, but apparently the the curators uh, aren't reaching the goals or something like that. It's the the curator thing. I think is supposed to direct you to game pages from cur- curator's recommendations. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so the day the curator stuff happened, I, I went and I had a look, and I posted on the uh, on the internal Steam Dev forums, going. Um, Valve, are you aware that the number one curator at this point is Total Biscuit, and his number one recommended game is Planetside? 
And if you click on his review, and then you click on the video, and then you click on show more, and you scroll to the end, it goes, this is a paid for product placement. So by Sony, it's like, are you aware that the curator lists are paid for by the publishers? And was this your intent? So yeah, the curator was just a fucking disaster area. Right. I don't know that much about it because I'll be honest, I don't really, I, I go on recommendations from my friends and, you know, things that sound appealing to me. I don't, I don't really go on Steam and yeah. then look at the curators and... No, no. A lot of it, it's about the sort of the, uh, lots of kids that follow the Yogg's Cast or they follow Top Biscuit or PewDiePie or whatever, and um, whatever they recommend, they'll go and play. So it, that that's what it is. It, it's Steam trying to bring some of that Twitch and YouTube traffic back onto their site. Yeah, yeah. I'm so cynical, I'm sorry. And someone has put something uh, else. Yeah, this was mine, but I'll keep it for <laughs> next time because I'm aware, acutely aware of the time and that... that uh, well, we've got six minutes if you want to talk about it. No, no it's fine because uh, we'll do it next time. It's not a time-sensitive one anyway. Basically, he doesn't want you to comment on it, whatever it is. No, no, it's because like I'd win. I'd be the winner. He'd win, yeah. I like Adam. <laughs> Adam's... Adam's it's, same same kind of person as me. He's always right. I can basically. tell the two of you haven't shut up all bloody street. You well, two have been bloody wittering between yourselves, talking about things and yeah, looking at the bloody internet and was. not paying uh, any attention. So well, shut what, up. It is, what it is, Chris, you see, they have to spend as much quality time as they can because it looks like they're sleeping together on a single bed after the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, with the cat. Doing the floor. Oh, that, that's a big cat. Oh, no, 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 sorry, there's a cat. It's not in the shop, but there is another cat around there somewhere. Another cat. Anyway, right, so um, we'll close the show then if Lou doesn't want to talk about a last subject. Sorry about rushing through the news, but to be fair, I hadn't read too much of the articles this week. I, I tried, tried my hardest, but I've been really, really busy with my real-life work. Um, so, yes, um, thank you very much to Adam for coming on the show. You've been a wonderful guest. As uh, Thank you for having me. I've had lots of always. fun. Um, before we do close and I do my hour pimpage, I shall let you do your URL spamming and everything else you want to do. Oh, that would have, that would have involved me being organised. So, uh, <laughs> Tell hey us guys, about your, your things that you're working on and that. Go and look at the Steam forum because we're doing lots of stuff and it's cool and we've got multiplayer coming in and I think everyone here has heard of me and my shitty ass game. So please come and have a look. More people that support it and play multiplayer makes me happy. I like going into people's worlds and seeing cool shit they've done. And he also likes trolling his own players as well, which I've noticed I, on, the, on the Steam forums. I have done that a little bit. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What do you mean you've made a mod? What's this mod about? Why? Why have you made a mod? I didn't give you permission, etc. Et uh, I was, I was, I was I did, someone goes, I've made a mod. And I was like, what? I've banned this guy forever. <laughs> like, what? You've done what? I'm like, no, you joke. Um, I have to say, it was great. So um, some people said to me, oh, do you like modders? I'm like, of course I like modders. Modders are great. I, I cut my teeth on modding, um, modding PC, uh, like Doom and stuff. Um, and I've been talking with the guy and he's done all these cool stuff. And I've just said that, dude, just send me the, um, uh, send me the code. Cause like, you've done this thing and it's way better than what I've done. Like way, 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 way better. So I've literally just been taking this guy's code and copy pasting it into, uh, <laughs> into Fortress going that's much better. I hope you've been and, and verifying that, it before you copy and paste oh, it. Oh no, I've been looking at going, yeah, no, he's just reworked the way the drop system works, he's reworked the way the laser system, I'm like, yeah, this is way better. And um, that second URL, by the way, if you need to, any proof why Fortress Craft is better than Minecraft, because you could do shit like that in it. So that's my argument, is that one there. I'll uh, I'll check that out in a bit. Anyway, so... Real. So thank you very much to everybody who's been watching. Uh, you've been a very chatty crowd tonight, and it's uh, it's always good to have. If you're interested in anything we do, we have a, a new a new website, newish website, www.residencearcade.com. All of our social links are on there, but I shall spam them here for for good measure. Um, Residence Arcade on everything. So it's uh, youtube.com forward slash Residence Arcade, twitter.tv forward slash, and hitbox.tv. We're also on as well. We're streaming on Hitbox right now, if you prefer Hitbox as a, a medium. And what else do we do? Google Plus, no one cares about. And Facebook.com forward slash Resonance Arcade. We have been Resonance Arcade. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>